Hello. I managed to set the 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 quality to 1080p. So we stream it in HD now. I mean, my camera probably still looks shit, but that's beside the point. <laughs> Hello. And uh, welcome back to more Apollo Justice. We do be enjoying the nugget. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Ah. So, yeah. I have no idea if it even looks good, to be honest. So... Where to get alone with just this? <laughs> uh, that's great. I am excited. This, this episode is kind of like a crackhead episode. Because there's just, like, a lot that's happening, and, like, <laughs> you're just, like... And Apollo is, like, what is going on? <laughs> so I'm excited to get into it. The music died again, but you know what? That's probably for the better, since I'm just gonna jump into it. Really. Da -da. Let's just continue. Turnabout corner. Let's go. As long as we draw breath, the wheel of fate turns. Wait, is there no sound? Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Why is there no sound? What's going on? Uh, why is my sound? Okay, my sound is fucking low as well. Yes! <laughs> I'm not too happy with, like, the actual, like, uh, what's it called? <laughs> the actual weights. I don't know how to brain. Uh, okay, why is this not working? Hold on, let me just reboot it. Okay. Now. Now we go. Here we go. Cool, cool, cool. Perfect. As long as we draw breath, the wheel of fate turns. Sweet. Spinning big crimes and little crimes together. And when the wheel stops... You die. Lovely. Love that. <laughs> exactly what I wanted to hear. It's not gonna be 11 hours. <laughs> Two months have passed since Mr. Gavin's arrest. My first trial, and I lost both my mentor and my job. <laughs> yeah, I'll admit I was screwed. But even when I hit bottom, I told myself I'd never come here. Honest. Here being the legendary Raiden Co. Law Offices. Okay, Justice. Time to stop trembling. Ah, you must be here for the interview. Right this way. Huh? Hello there. You found the right place. Welcome. Uh, uh, what's with this girl? 
Well now, shall we begin? Begin what? Right, first things first. Any special talents? Um, talents? Yes, well, you must have at least one. Well, uh, I guess... Defending? Defending? An unusual talent, but it'll do. With a little jazzing up, of course. Y you think so? Let's give it a go, shall we? Uh-huh. Go ahead, show me, defend! Just give it all you've got, don't hold back now. But, but, what are you talking about? I can't just defend here. First lesson, a professional can perform anywhere. Thanks. We want people to be laughing with us, not at us. Thanks. But I'm not sure why they should be laughing at all. <laughs> what exactly do you think you came here to do? What, um, defend? No? Excuse me, but do you know where you are? Huh? The writing call law offices, right? Oh, I was afraid of that. Don't worry, you're not the first. Look, what's going on here? Who are you? I came here to meet with the person in charge. Well, you have apparently made no fewer than two mistakes. Mistakes? But I got a call from Mr. Wright this morning. Perhaps you should go read the sign out front again? What's there to read? Look, it says right there! Oh. Why does it say Wright Talent Agency? Welcome to the Wright Talent Agency, where you've always come to the right place. I'm Tracy Wright, CEO. I'm a magician. It all came flooding back. The trial. A girl. Hello, sir. Please pick a card. That's right. She's my daughter. Trucy. Right. Here, check out our flyer. So, what's your name? Apollo. Apollo Justice, Attorney at Law. Sweet. So, is this really a talent agency? You bet! Daddy started it seven years ago, when he quit law. Of course, we only have two people signed up for right now. Two people? Does that include you? Tracy Wright, magician extraordinaire. I've done a lot of stage shows, paid too. I'm a professional, you know? Uh, right. I promise you'll come to one of my shows, okay? Let's see. Oh, and the other person our agency represents is Phoenix Wright, pianist extraordinaire. <laughs> Your dad, in other words. Didn't he say he couldn't play the piano? Our agency doesn't see that as a problem. Why? There are many magicians who can't do magic. At least you've, you're optimistic, I'll give you that. Like I said, this entire episode is just Apollo being really confused. <laughs> So, you're uh, his, uh, you're Phoenix Wright's daughter. That's right. After Daddy quit law seven years ago, I promised I would keep him fed. So I'm kind of his sugar daddy, get it? Oh yeah, that too. I forgot about that part. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in charge of this whole office too. Pretty amazing for a young lass of 15, wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you agree? Fifteen? Uh, how old is Mr. Wright? Daddy? Oh, he's 33 this year. I'm sure that's a good explanation. I hope. Um, about Mr. Wright giving up law. It was because of that incident seven years ago, wasn't it? Eh? You know about that? Not, a, not the details. I remember the news, though. It was a big deal. So I hear. I was too young to understand what was going on. I'll ask Daddy about it next time I get a chance. Daddy, right. It kinda reminds me, uh, about Mr. Wright. He gave me a call this morning to come in. Daddy's not here right now. He's in the hospital. The hospital? Yeah, he's some strict bed rest until he gets better. Wh what? Okay. Which hospital is Mr. Wright in? I'll pay him a visit. Oh, the Hickfield Clinic. It's quite close. Right, well, I'll be going now, and I'll, uh, 
Give this showbiz gig some thought, okay? Wait, I'll go with you. So this is Mr. Wright's hospital. Why does he have so much there? I have questions. A tiny toy piano. I like how he just has bottles of grape juice, like, spread around. No. <laughs> eh, visitors, are you? Hmm. Uh, yeah. Are you the doctor? Yep. Dr. Hickfield's the name. <laughs> Good morning, doctor. Oh, hi there, Trucy. Cute as ever. I hate this so much. <laughs> Is this daddy's room? Oh yeah, Septi has gone back for a, gone for a morning checkup. Be back soon. How are you, Miss Trucy? Got any places you'd like examine? Sir, she's fifteen. <laughs> Why? Why do they keep bringing him back? Why? <laughs> Doctor, the nurse was looking for you. Hi, hey, if it isn't the daddy o, the cutest little thing in town. Hmm. Hmm, guess I'll be off then, eh? Huh? Later, Trissy. Wow, what an odd bird that guy was. Yeah. Odd. <laughs> Good morning. Didn't expect you so soon, Apollo. Mr. Wright. So, what happened? Who could have imagined it? Me, victim of a hit and run. A hit and... You were hit by a car? Oh, he tried to swerve. I'll give him that. Picture me tossed 30 feet through the air. Only stopping when my head hit that telephone pole. You hit a telephone pole with your head? Are you okay? Thankfully, my only injury was a sprained ankle. <laughs> what is happening? We're, we're like 15 minutes in and it's already- there's so much happening. It really is as lucky as they say. Oh my god. There's something that, well, it just doesn't sit right. I just can't believe you have a daughter, Miss Wright. And she's so big. N not fat, but uh, you know what I mean. Well, Trissy's still a child. Daddy, how many times do I have to remind you? Yes. I'm not a child anymore. <laughs> well, you'll always be that is little girl, baby girl to me, Trucy. I mean, she's 15. She's technically a child, still. <laughs> like, technically speaking, she's still a child. Ha <laughs> my foot. I'm not buying it. Oh, something you should know about Trucy. She's a magician, right? She told me. Not a mere stage magician. She's a genius. <laughs> oh, daddy. We'll soon come to appreciate her talent. Why is that in, in air quotes? Or, or like in quotes? I don't... You come to appreciate her talent. Sir, what, what is happening? You could just tell me things instead of insinuating them. Yeah, thank you, Apollo. <laughs> So, why did you contact me? What could the right talent agency possibly want with me? I need to get prickly now. Hey, I didn't ask to be dragged in like this. Huh? But didn't you come into the office of your own free will, anyway? Well, yeah, of course. Help, we're in big trouble here at the office. Big! I thought someone was dying. So you don't think this is big trouble? My talent agency represents only two people, and one of them is in the hospital. That's right, Daddy. How are we going to pay this month's rent? And the groceries? Yeah, that's the problem with such a tight operation. It's a symbiotic relationship, and one of us falls, the other two must fall. Hey, this isn't exactly a suitable conversation to be having with a 15-year-old kid. In any case, if Apollo here can't help you, you'll have to transfer to a new school, again. Oh, I can't. 
I only just made friends. How could you do this to me? To us, Polly? Uh-huh. What? Now it's my fault? On that note, how about you come work for us? I got the perfect client for you already lined up. A, a client? You mean I get to do my job? I get to defend in court? Alright. I'll hear what you have to say. You got him, Daddy. Hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> now it's time to reel him in. It's official. I'm scared. <laughs> Alright, so who's the client? Ah, yes. Here, take a look at the map and I'll explain. Last night. Okay, I will enjoy this stream. <laughs> you have a good evening. Last night, I left the office just before 9 o'clock. I was going through that... Indochine? Pasta joint. Alden Taze. I play piano there, of course. That's when it happened. I'm just like imagining him playing chopsticks. That's the only thing he can play. <laughs> the car sent me flying, nicked a telephone pole, and zoomed away. Creepy, huh? Just a tad. It's almost as creepy as hearing you tell the story like it was no big deal. And the car sped off in this direction. So, good luck. Huh? I wanted a client, didn't you? Well, I'm your client. Find the guy who knocked me into that telephone pole. Whoa, hold on. I'm a defense attorney, not a detective. Don't worry. Once you found the guy, I intend to sue him. And you can stick it to him in court. I'm not a prosecutor either. I'm sorry, but this is crazy. I'm going home. Don't get so worked up. It was just a joke. Huh? Oh, Daddy. Sorry, Apollo. He just loves jokes, you know. Since when? Since when? Since when? Was it when I first played this? I was like, since when? <laughs> Even the ones that aren't very funny. Since when? If... I mean... I, I know why, but like. I remember him not finding Mo very funny. So, like, I, I, I made this, like, fucking rant on Instagram, like, back in 2017 when I played this game for the first time. And I was like, why is him suddenly finding jokes funny? Like, even in funny ones. And I was like, is it just because he's, it's because he's the dad, isn't it? He's a dad. That's it. That's literally just because he's a dad now. <laughs> a real client should be stopping by the office any time now. The office? You mean the talent agency? No harm in going. It's not like I have anything else to do. One more thing. Do look into my accident too, would, would you? I marked I'm, I'm mark the scene of the tragedy on this map. Tragedy. It's right in front of this park. Should be easy to find. So he's going to make me investigate this after all. Okay, sweet. Back to the talent agency, I guess. Hey, hey, hey. long are you planning on making me wait, huh? Ah, good morning! Hey there, Trucy doll! Honestly, this is like one of the best characters in the entire franchise! <laughs> one of my favorite characters! Sounds like your pops had a bit of a rough spot, huh? All's well that ends well, I guess. This... is our client? Hey, so is that Polo fellow, huh? So this is that P Paolo fellow, huh? Oh, uh, 
Yes, the name's Apollo. Look at him there, arms all crossed like, ready to fight. Yes, sir. You don't mean that literally, do you? Well, the boss told me what I need, right? Don't let me down now, Apollo. Don't worry about your defense, sir. I'm on it. Defense? Your noodle half cooked? It's too late for defense. My castle's been stormed. My keep's been kept. My noodle stand's been stolen. N noodle? You know Mr. L. Dune from the noodle stand, don't you, Polly? No nicknames, please. And no, of course I don't know him. Doing this part? Not really. And you know the best noodles in town, I'll do in snoodles. <laughs> uh, whose noodles? My noodles. Uh, help me out here, Trucy doll. This is Mr. Guy L. Dune, the noodle guy, our client. <laughs> Maybe you could tell us what the problem is, Mr. Eldun. Anything for you, Trucy doll. Sweet. Who is this guy? So, you run a noodle stand, Mr. Eldun. Guy Eldun's the name. The noodles are my game. The secret's in the soup. I've been searching for the perfect soup for, ha for a year and a half. Oh, that's... Not that long, really. My family's been noodle men for generations. Got a lot of expectations on my shoulder. Fifteen fathers passing the noodle to fifteen sons. That's a pretty old noodle! Hi. <laughs> oh, the voice cracked though. Aye, and the fool that I was, I pushed it away. I rebelled against my pops and picked another livelihood. But that didn't turn out so well. Oh. There was no denying it. Salty broth runs through these veins, boy. So, it was like destiny that you came became what you are. Right. Destiny is the word. So I fought it. But in the end, I was bound, bound by the twisted noodle of fate. Not a mental image I care to linger on. Last year, I started my noodle stand. 15th generation of Eldun's noodles. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, you couldn't ask for a, a, a better... a better name. <laughs> Eldun. <laughs> Um, so tell me more about Eldun's noodles. You don't know the genius that are my noodles. I make them so salty. Why they're saltier than salt? Oh, I really don't want to find out. That is a regular at his noodle stand. I frequented my pop stand back during his attorney days too. Yep, him and his assistants. But they went for burgers! <laughs> Ah, noodle burgers, my favorite. I'm sorry, I'll be sure to drop by your stand soon. Wish you could, Sonny. Eh? Heck, I wish I could. I'd give anything for a bulb up now. What do you mean? It was stolen. My stand. Gone. Stolen? It was last night. I was doing my rounds, blowing my whistle. That's a harmonica. It's like an ice cream truck's bell, but louder. He even gets complaints. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, I, he has another whistle, whistle, or is that supposed to be his whistle? I, I can't fucking tell. I have one too. <laughs> I wanted to try it and play the song, but I don't know how to do that. So. There we go. Perfect. Nailed it. I don't actually know how to play the harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> if my hoodie could stop turning down the sound on my end. 
but it sounded more like the blues than a whistle. I closed up my stand for the night and parked up, parked by the house. And this morning, dark and early, it was gone. My keep, my castle. Oh. Maybe some bum carted it off. I'm just guessing here. I don't care who did it. Without that stand, I'm finished. My noodle bowls were in there too. That's the saddest thing I've heard all day. You know when. Anyways, that's the deal. Any house, that's the deal. Good luck. Good. Huh? Wait. What exactly is your request? A noodle stand. Find it. And the day you bring my baby back is the day you feast on as many noodles as you want. Of course, I make it so hot and salty. Two bowls kill a man. Then I really need defense. Speaking of defense, that's what I do. I'm a lawyer, not a detective. This is where I live. You drop by if you need any info, okay? Get it back today if you can, Paulo. I got noodles to make. Things have certainly taken a turn for the bizarre. It's only gonna get weird, my boy. It's fine. <laughs> Traffic accidents, and noodle stand thieves. Um, actually, there was something I wanted to ask you about too, Apollo. Huh? I have a bad feeling about this. Oh, listen to the lady's problem now. Don't be cruel. I lost something last night. That is, something was stolen. Hey, what's this? More thieving and skullduggery? Well, um, someone stole a pair of my panties. <laughs> I understand what I mean with the fucking crackhead episode. Oh my god. Ah, yes. <laughs> Panties? Um, so they were, um, stolen. Your, um... My panties, yes. Ah, uh, right. Panties. That's a crying shame, then. That is, Trudy doll. I was alone in the office last night. I had hung my panties out the window there to dry. Then a thief came and took them. My favorite panties! I ran after him. Give those back, I shouted. Wait! Well, that was certainly brave of you. But I lost him. Without those pennies, I don't know what I'll do. <sighs> I don't cry in shame, yep. Well, at least the scene of the crime is convenient. I'll mark it on your map. Thank you. I wouldn't be able to find it other otherwise. <laughs> I'll be heading home now. Remember, find my stand, or, or there's an empty bowl in your future, Apollo. Uh, right. And you help out Twisted All here too, you hear? Things have certainly picked up, haven't they? We have no, we had no work yesterday, and now we have three cases. I, I guess. Let's see where we stand. Not in a courtroom. That's where. Well, the first item on our list. Phoenix Wright. Daddy's hit and run accident. We have to find the one who hit him. Who's going to pay us for this again? And the second item. Mr. Eldoon's request. To find his stolen stand. For which we stand to gain. A bowl of salty noodles. And the last request is mine. To find my stolen panties. 
That bowl of noodles is looking better and better. Let's go, Polly, to the streets. Aren't you enthusiastic? How could I not be? Let's crack these cases, you and me. Uh, I guess we might as well get started. Let's see, a hit and run, a stolen stand, and last but not least, stolen panties. Uh, let's go to the accident first. So why not? So this is where Mr. Wright got hit by that car. According to the map, this is the place. What a huge mansion. Feels like Chinatown. Oh, there's a nice looking lady over there. Let's question her. Um, okay. I'm a little curious about the park over there too. Excuse me, um, can we have a few words with you? You want something? Whoa, oh, okay, husky voice. Why am I suddenly sweating? How am I gonna do husky voice without fucking breaking my own voice? <laughs> That's quite a house you've got there. You must have a lot of money. Oh. <laughs> Money. <laughs> Sounds like something my son would call his friends. Oh god. This is the Kitaki family mansion, little girl. Eh? You, kid with the hair. Want something? Uh, me? No, not this thing. Bye. Apollo, we can't just leave without questioning her. What if she knows something? Uh, but the, the Kitaki family. They're the biggest organized crime syndicate in town. If you're going to ask something, ask it. If you're mad enough. Oh, right. Yeah, you way to whip him into shape, ma'am. Trucy. <laughs> Does she know no fear? I'm Plum. Plum Kitaki. Wife of the fourth head of the Kitaki fam family business. Friends call me Little Plum. I'm... Little Apollo Justice, attorney at law. Hmm? If Lois could kill, this woman would be a mass murderer by now. Little Plum? That's a really cute name for someone so... Yes? Whoa! When is it, Apollo? How about you go through me when talking to her, okay, Trissy? <laughs> Huh? That seems like a bit of a needless procedure. I'm a lawyer. I, I live for needless procedures. Oh, little girl. You should know. We're gangsters. Gangst? Oh, that means you're the bad guys. Trucy, through me, please. I'm begging you here. <laughs> the bad guys. I like the sound of that. I'm gonna need some warm tea after this. It takes a lot of hard work to protect a family fortune. <clears throat> Things aren't as easy as they used to be for us bad guys. So, you're saying that business is in a slump? Let's not ask about business if we can help it, please. There was a car accident here last night. Last night. O of course, you wouldn't know about it. Sorry to bother you. Wait. Yes? You're talking about that man, aren't you? The one who flew 30 feet and just walked away. <laughs> That's my daddy! <laughs> I should have known. One of our capos thought he'd make a great point man. Capo? Point man? Um, could you avoid using too much, uh, industry lingo? In any case, it's been nothing but trouble. I've been cleaning up this mess since morning. Ugh. Cleaning up this... paint? Was this paint spilled at the time of the accident? It was around 9 last night. I heard a crashing noise. And found your father drowning in a sea of paint. So you came to his rescue? 
You've my, you've my husband, the boss, to thank for that. The car that hit your father knocked over this paint, and turned the corner and sped away. We're in the middle of repainting our wall, you see. I'm sure that dragon is glaring at me. But why are you here clear cleaning it up? What do you mean? I mean, aren't you a gangster? Don't you have any goons to do your dirty work for you? Please, go through me when you want to... <laughs> Don't be such a stiff lawyer, boy. Suppose we gangsters do have a certain image. Um, yes. We're community-oriented gangsters, you see. The boss likes to give back to the people, see? How noble of him. I have helped myself to the pu of the public facilities to get rid of all the garbage. Now there's just a paint on the street to deal with. Public facilities? I wonder if she means that trash can. Who's that? She's looking at the park. She's pretty. I bet she has a story, you know? There's something about her. Too bad she seems to be in a bit of a rush. Okay, bye. There's a big... <laughs> Thank you so much for the follow. <laughs> Virgil, Max Hype. Thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate it. Hope you... Enjoy the stream. <laughs> My earphones are supposed to light up when I get a follow, by the way, but I don't know why they don't. They like do it a few minutes later for some reason. I can't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big trash can on the way into the park. I guess we could check it out. A detective's life sure is a hard one. I'm an attorney, actually. Huh? Hmm. Two pieces of a garbage, garbage with paint on them. These are slippers. They look like those slippers you get at the hospital. Look at this, Apollo. Doesn't this go on a car? It's a side view mirror. Looks like it was torn off when it smacked into something. Or someone. Wait, you don't think... I do. This could be from the car that hit Mr. Wright. Wow. And he took off its mirror? I never knew daddy was so strong. <laughs> I only have room in my pocket for one of these, though. Which do you want to take? The mirror. Ahead of you? I literally just started this case. <laughs> or this case. It's a it's a crackhead case. I love it so much, honestly. This would be Mr. Eldoon's house, silly. Oh, I forgot to read. What's this? <laughs> oh, so this is where his stand was stolen from. I can see a piece of evidence lying on the ground already. Hey! Oh, okay, I see, I see, I see. Look, there's a police car parked over there. You're right. What's with the sparkly... entrance? What is this place, a hospital? There's a sign, Maractus Clinic. Hmm. Oh, that's where the thief went. The thief? The one who snatched my panties. He ran into this clinic last night. I'm so excited for case three, honestly. When I say I've been practicing. <laughs> I'm not going to give context, but I've been practicing. <laughs> Wait, maybe that police car is here to find my panties. Trucy, I don't, I don't think the police works like that. 
I doubt it. <laughs> well, there is only one way to be sure. Let's investigate. Ah, there you are, Sonny. Well, you find anything yet? Uh, um, no. Not yet. The longer you loaf around here, the saltier your victory bowl gets. Just remember that. This bowl of noodles is sounding less like payment and more like punishment. Anyways, uh... Bowl. Get bowl. Is this yours, Mr. Eldun? Hey, there's the heart and soul of Eldun's noodles. The bowl absorbs my salty soup. Pretty soon it's gonna taste just like noodles. Wow, it does smell like noodles. All my other bowls got taken away with my stand. Get it back for me, sonny boy. I'm begging you. Sure thing, old man. Um. So, your stan, Aldoon's noodles, was it? Aye, passed down from father to son. It stands seen its share of salt. Mm hmm. Salt runs in the family, you might say. I bet high blood pressure does too. So, your stan, Aldoon's noodles, was stolen. It wasn't just the stand that was stolen, sonny boy. I lost those wobbly wheels, my salt-crusted soup pot, my stained sign. I didn't just lose a stand, I lost a legend. No one steals a legend and gets away with it on my watch. Let's find that legend, Apollo. Isn't it about time he bought a new one anyway? Are there any more details you could give me about the stand? You bet, sonny boy. It happened last night. I was blowing my whistle like always, crying the town. I was. The smell of broth filled the, filled the streets, thick and salty. I got home, well, right before 10 p.m., I reckon. As he's not aiming for that late night market. I washed my bowls and gave the wheels a squirt of grease, then I went inside. When did you notice it had been stolen? Early this morning, before the sun rose. Work starts early. That many people eat noodles for breakfast? I'm washed up on the salty shores of ruination. That stand had my whole life in it. Hey, my whole being. They took everything? All my soup stock, my noodles, my bowls, and my dreams. At least they left one bowl. Look, there, on the ground. If you don't find that stand today, then I'll be forced to walk the streets paddling that bowl. Peddling that bowl. My last bowl. Please. I'm under enough pressure here as it is. Poor Apollo. He just wants to defend. <laughs> Apollo is like here to defend. And then it's just like, Hey Apollo, find my panties. Hey Apollo, find my noodle stand. Hey Apollo, find out who fucking hit me with their car. <laughs> and Apollo is like, what am I doing here? That's it! That's where the thief who snatched my panties went to. It's a crying shame, that, that is. If they have to steal, make it my loincloth. Not some pretty girl's panties. Garage, right? You don't think the thief lives there, do you? Heh. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past that good-for-nothing doctor. Hmm, do I detect a little animosity here? Let's make sure to check out that garage thoroughly. Sure, we'll check out that garage. There we go. I don't understand if there was an ambulance outside, but... Police car? Maybe they're tax evaders. Oh, sorry, miss. No going into the clinic today. Did something happen? Huh? Oh no, nothing to see here. Move along. We'll have to find someplace else to play doctor. Do we look like the right age to be playing doctor? We need a little more info on the Maractus Clinic. We could ask Mr. Aldoon. He is their neighbor and all. And we should check out that garage. What if the thief who stole my panties is still in there? <laughs> Squint to the garage. This is the place! 
This is where the penny snatcher ran. Are you sure? Maybe. Let's look for clues. Clues to a panty snatching. Clues like a pair of panties. Um, Jersey? Could you try not saying panties so many times? <laughs> There's something about this car. Let's take a closer look. Look, a cell phone. Someone dropped it beneath this tire. If the car moved, it will be crushed for sure. Hmm, I wonder if it belongs to the doctor here. We should bring it to him later. Hey, look at that! The mirror's been broken off. Now this is a clue. What? You're smiling like you know something I don't. You aren't keeping a clue for me, are you, Polly? A clue? Let's see... I think I do have just a clue you got in mind. My clue is... This! Whoa! It's the same color and size and everything! A perfect match! I guess we could check it out. Hmm, two pieces of garbage with paint on them. Look at this, Apollo! Doesn't this go in a car? It's a side view mirror! Looks like it was torn off when it smacked into something. Or someone. It looks like we just we just solved the case. So the car that hit Daddy last night... is sitting right in front of us. Yep. Wow! You put the pro in professional, Apollo. Gee, thanks, Trucy. That reminds me. I once read a record of a case that Mr. Wright worked on many years ago. Apparently, there was this car with a piece of cloth shoved into the tailpipe. Don't fucking remind me of the fucking muffler, alright? <laughs> a piece of cloth turned out to be a vital clue to solving the case. Wow! I remember that case record whenever I'm checking out a car. I always check the tailpipe. Everybody, everyone's gotta have a ho hobby, I guess. Wouldn't it be funny if... Hey, there's something in there. What? Wait a second, are these your... <gasps> My panties! What? Already? <laughs> wow, thank you, Apollo. You're a genius. Amazing. No, no, really, don't mention it. No, I'm serious. I'm really impressed. You must have a nose for finding girls' panties. Um... What are those? <laughs> My little panties, of course. They've come home to Mama. I can't wait to use them. You're going to put them on? Now? Much closer now. See? Nothing in the panties. Ta-da! Whoa! Where where'd that come from? How did that bowl get in your panties? My panties are an extra-dimensional space. Anything can fit in there. They're my magic panties. It's one of my best tricks. Magic panties? They love them over at the Wonder Bar. I do shows there nightly. You mean those panties are a prop? You could have told me a little sooner. Well, that's one case closed, at least. What are you saying? We still have to catch the slight devil that ran off with the tool of my trade. Oh. Right. Apollo! Huh? What is it? Now that we have solved this case, we should go report to Daddy. He'll mope if we leave him alone too long, knowing him. Um, okay. He doesn't seem the type to mope, though. And this is hardly a case worth reporting. <laughs> Let me just talk to Aldun again. Can I talk about the Maractus Clinic? Yes, I can. Hey, do you think something happened next door? There's a police car out front. Heh, <laughs> probably gave someone food poisoning, I'll bet. If anyone's at risk of giving someone food poisoning... The police car got here this morning, actually. I asked what they were up to, but they wouldn't even tell me. Tell me, the neighbor. Huh. <laughs> hmm... 
Not that I was surprised much. That doctor worked for the wrong crowd. It was just a matter of time before I got what, he, what was coming to him. Huh. The wrong crowd? Never you mind about that. Actually, wait, do I have anything I can show him? I don't think I have. No. <laughs> okay, back here. And, uh, wait, do you have anything to say? Or is it just like Petty Snatcher and he leads? Maybe I have to. Actually, ah! What? You want to see them again? Well, if you must... No, 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 I'm fine, really. Let's just put them away, shall we? Case closed. What are you talking about? The case isn't closed until we have our thief. Just find him on the side, while you work on the other cases. If it were that easy, we wouldn't need the police. If we don't need the police, then we don't need defense attorneys either, right? Fine, fine, I'll look for your panty snatcher. Back to Hickfield, the Hickfield Clinic. Huh. Mr. Wright's gone. Maybe he's gone for an examination. He'll probably be back soon. Let's wait. I think it might take some time. Daddy always loves his examinations. Uh huh. <laughs> don't ask justice. You don't want to know. <laughs> what is going on? Why don't we come back later? Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay. Let's try the bowl. Tell my bowls by the Mr. Salty logo. The mascot of Eldun's noodles! They come to the stand, they sit and they drink deep from that bowl. And when they see the bottom, their face looks just like Mr. Salty's. Genius, no? Very high concept. You can't apply a trade if you don't know the tools. Remember that. Yes, sir! Trucy has a thing for professionals. Clearly. Oh. oh god, that's so annoying. I have to use this. It's the Eldoon's Noodles mascot. Mr. Salty, he's so cute. It's not a very endearing mascot, is it? You know, come to think of it. It looks a lot like you, Apollo. Especially the red parts. Can I help it if I like red? Cute little watch strap. I want one. It's kind of odd though. What is? I mean, if you wanted to know the time, you could just look at the phone itself. Hey, you're right. Sharp Apollo. Thanks. Finally, some respect. So, what does it tell you? Well, the owner of this phone doesn't think through the details for one. They did drop their phone after all. I kind of figured they were a little spacey already. Oh, good point. Actually, wait, there's... I believe there's something else in the... garage. I could use my guide, but... Eh. Someone's there! Oh, it's just a gold-painted human skeleton. Just a human skeleton? And painted gold? There's a mannequin hand waving to us from the box behind the skeleton. This place just screams hospital storage, don't you think? It screams something, that's for sure. Oh, step ladder. Look, it's a folding ladder. Oh, a new one. Polly, that's called a step ladder. Come on. A step ladder? 
How is that different from a regular ladder, then? It's a much more complex piece of machinery. It's like two ladders stuck together. So you admit that basically it's a ladder, right? Wait, huh? You have to look past the form, at the essence of the thing. Uh, can we talk about something else? Damn. This is probably where I got stuck last time I did this, too. Oh, talk to Plum. I thought there was something else in here. People Park. Huh, kind of an odd name for such an empty place. I wonder why it's named that. Hey, there's something written on the gatepost. Huh? Oh yeah, it says donated by Big Winds Kitaki. You mean the Kitaki family built this park? It's so nice of them to give to the community like that. Let's not get too friendly with them, shall we? A gangster building a park. Odd move for a crime boss. What about you? Personally, I'm a little more interested in this park. You know what I think? I bet they're filming a movie. Let's go take a look. Maybe we'll see someone famous. Hey, miss, stay out of the park. He got mad at me. Um, did something happen here, officer? Huh? Oh, no, move along, nothing to see. Why don't you kids go play someplace, someplace else? We're not kids and we're not playing. I am an attorney. Something wrong? Ah, oh, Detective Sky! We're fine, ma'am. Nothing to report. Detective? Why is she wearing a lab coat? You hardly want to com you you hardly want to comment on how people are dressed. And these keys kids are Curiosity seekers, ma'am. They claim to be lawyers. Ah, why don't you kids run along and play someplace else? Look, we're not... Or I might spill something on that pretty face of yours. Want a dose of experimental... Hydro... Hydroxyacelonodosetrace? Nailed it. Come again? What's hydroxy... Stuff? Whatever it is, it doesn't sound good. Let's go, Trucy. Try to keep out the riffraff if you could. Yes, ma'am. Uh, how are we going to get more information like this? Why don't we ask that nice woman across the street? Oh, yes, that nice woman. Mm. Now we can talk to Plum again. Cool. <laughs> can I ask you a question? What? What happened in the park across the street? Oh, yes. At the commotion. Chicago Lightning, as the boss would say. Chicago... Huh? Gunfire. Someone was killed. Strange circumstances, too. You're kidding! What a morning. Trouble everywhere. In the park, the gate, even our house. Did something happen at your house, too? A crime without honor. Without remorse. It's a private matter. Wanna hear about it? Somehow, I don't think no is an acceptable answer, Polly. Sure, tell me about your private matter. So, what happened at your house? Bloomers, last night. Eh? I got a bad feeling about this. Me, little plum kitaki, the victim of a panty snatcher. Oh, gee. Lovely. What? So it wasn't just my panties that were stolen. Oh, you too, did they? Poor thing. Like I said, whoever did this is a hardened criminal. It wasn't you, was it? N no, of course not. Mercy! I've heard word that panties have been disappearing lately. And the missing panties all have something in common. It's hard to imagine Trucy's and Mr. Kitaki's panties having much in common. 
Just imagine Mr. Kitake's panties. Um. I know! We'll find your bloomers, too! Great. Show me what you're made of. What have you gotten me into this time, Trucy? <laughs> A girl from before. Oh, welcome home, sweetie. Ah, uh, uh, hello, mother. She's a Kitaki too? Uh, um, miss, miss. Here, our flyer. The right anything agency? Anything agency? Yeah, don't you like the new flyer? So, um, this is our defense attorney, Mr. Apollo Justice. Attorney. Drop by our office. We'll be waiting. Huh. Goodbye. A very meaningful conversation. Why did you give her our flyer? I don't know. She seemed like she could use some help. She's the heiress to the gangster dynasty. She doesn't need our help. I wouldn't be so sure. Can I now go to Hickfield? Yes. Yo, how goes it? Daddy, how do you feel? Not bad, Trucy. Not bad. It's good to have you youngins on the case. And so Daddy will get some well-rested R&R. Well-deserved R&R, well &R, I mean. The elderly need their rest. Uh, isn't he only 33? Um, we've cleared up most of the cases. I was right about you. Competent. Capable. Tell me what you found out, if you want to. Your enthusiasm, your enthusiasm is overwhelming. Well, I certainly didn't expect you back this early. Well, he's amazing. He found my panties so quick. Almost like he was the one who stole them. Trucy, please. You have an interesting concept of praise. And? You find the mad driver who gave me that 30 foot toss. Apparently, it was a doctor from the Maractis Clinic. Hmm, Maractis, huh? I've heard of him. Nothing good, mind you. It reminds me, a police car was parked outside the clinic. Maybe something happened. What is this Maractus clinic anyway? Well, I've heard are the, are the rumors. That clinic's been making good money. In a bad way. Bad? Ties to organized crime. The Kentucky family. Um, the Kentucky family? He did that on purpose. Some injuries you can't take to a public hospital, see? They use the Maractus clinic for their patch-up jobs. Interesting. It looked like something had happened in that park. Huh, a body was found there in unusual circumstances. Something more unusual than being dead? It's not our concern, in, in any case. Right, let's ignore that and find that noodle stand. Whatever happened to professional curiosity? Thanks, really. If I get tired of sleeping, maybe I'll head down to the this Maractus place. Maybe hit him up for some reparations. A little legal action would do me some good. Um, I was wondering when I get paid. We solved the case of your accident and, um, found a missing article of clothing. My panties! Leaves the noodle stand. Eh? Feel free to drop in if you get stuck. I'd be happy to help with anything not involving money. Goodbye, quid pro quo. Hello, pro bono. Hmm. Right. Back to the office to plan our next move. Okay, back to the office. I fucking guess. <laughs> you! You were that woman from the Kitaki place. Y yes. I knew it! Something's the matter and you want our help, right? Well, you've come to the right place. This way, please. Um, thank you. 
My name is Alita Tiala. I have a request. Okay. Your request, let me guess. Something's been stolen. Um, your flyer. It says now defending, so I thought... What? You mean, you mean you want me to defend you? Me? Maybe you can tell us what happened. Were you hit by a car? Did someone steal your stand or your panties? No, no. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you <laughs> so much for, for dropping by. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I'm not the client, actually. The client would be my, well, my fiancé, I suppose you'd call him. Fiancé? What happened to him, then? He was a... Thank you so much for the follow, Radiant Jackie. He was arrested this morning. The charge was murder. Murder? Have you heard about what happened at the park? What happened? I haven't been told all the details, but I do know a body was found in the park, near the Kitaki Mansion. There were a lot of pe police cars there. Apparently, the victim was shot with a pistol. But I hear the circumstances of the shooting were rather unusual. Your fiancé was arrested for this. Um, what sort of person is your fiancé? So, what's your story? You frequent the Kitaki Mansion, yes? You a member of their, um, organization? No, not yet. Not yet? You see... I am to be married next month to the boss's son. The boss's son? So he's uh, um, a gangster. Yes, but the Kitakis are locally responsible gangsters. I thought I'd be nice. it'd be nice for a change. Quit my boring job. Live the good gangster life. I think you're onto something. Miss Kitaki. I like the sound of that. I'm not sure your daddy would care much for that. Your fiancé is the Kitaki family's son, correct? His name is Woki. Woki Kitaki. I brought a photo. Well, that's... quite the photo. Oh look, it's the, uh, it's the bandit badger. I know! Oh, he can be so powerful and menacing, but so cute! But if he's the boss's only son... Yes, I'm sure he'll take his father's place someday. Say, I'm a boss already of this agency. Please help my walkie, please. Right, my first solo defense case. Crime boss's son or not, I'll prove he's innocent. I prepared a letter of request. I know you need those. Right, let's go check out the scene of the crime. Yes, let's. Please. And it's gonna get so weird from here on. As if it wasn't weird already. Let's fucking go. So this is it. My first murder crime scene. It, ah, it's you kids again. Look, can't you find some other place to play? We're not playing. We're, um, investigating. Aren't we, Apollo? Sir, I have a letter of request here. Letter of... Huh? Why does it say hit request on it? Miss Tiala must have used the Kitaki stationery. Excuse me, coming through. Hi, it's you, Mr. Gavin. Who's this guy? I must say, I'm used to being inspected by the ladies, but this is the first time I felt this way with a man. M Mr. Gavin? Ah, Fraulein, what is such a sweet morsel like you doing in such a dismal place? Can I help? Y yes the policeman officer fellow here won't let us in. We even have a letter of request. You must be exhausted, standing out here. I will take you to the scene of the crime. Ooh, r really? By your leave, officer. Yeah, yes, sir. Of course, sir. <laughs> Very well. This way, Fraulein. Whee! Hey, 
Why? What about me? On that note, enjoy your investigation. You. Will we see you again? Ask the wind, Fraulein. I'll be riding on it. Who was that? <laughs> Paolo, look! A corpse! What? Hey, it's just a mannequin. Wow, it sure got me. Ahem. <clears throat> Might I ask exactly what it is you're doing here? Oh, it's you. How did you kids get in here? This guy. Well, he was more like a prince, really. Let us in. Him again. A glimmerous fop, always getting in my way. Anyway, this seat is off limits. Excuse me? We have a letter of request. Hmm, one moment. Why is she holding that big magnifying glass? Oh, you're a German. Apparently, apparently he's not actually German, and I just like I, I feel I feel so I feel so deceived. <laughs> I was like, he's not actually German. He just fakes it for whatever reason. But it explains why like there is no German in Kristoff's like dialogue. And I made him German last time, and I'm like, well, fuck me then, I guess. I'd recognize that handwriting anywhere. Scientific analysis says we this was written by Alita Tiala. Thanks. It took you 30 minutes to figure that out? Yeah. <laughs> so what's up with the mannequin there? At least that gives me like an excuse to give like a, a to make like a, a shitty um German accent. <laughs> I took I took German for three years. I don't remember anything. <laughs> I I I I remember was machst du gern. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, it's taken the place of the body, preserving the scene of the crime as it was found. The body was pulling the stand. So you're a defense attorney, are you? Detective Emma Sky. I'm in charge of this crime scene. She doesn't seem that happy about it. She doesn't seem that happy about many things. I trust you know how, know how to stay out of the way. I always carry two pairs of handcuffs, just in case. Um, Detective Sky? Quiet, please. It's snack time. We're not making much progress here. She must not be very busy. <sighs> I never seem to get a lucky break. Back after nine years and they won't give me the position I requested. And then I hear he gave up the defense attorney life. He? Who's he? An ex-defense attorney. Hold on. What if we... I can't present... Damn it. Back here. I didn't actually mean to go here, but sure, why not? Polly, you look as happy as a clam in its shell. For a lawyer, this is it. The place where the battle begins. Ahem, <clears throat> you need something? Ha, huh, yes. We're attorneys. I was hoping we could see Mr. Waki Kitaki. Sorry, he's in questioning right now. Could take a while. Drat. Oh well. Guess we'll have to come back later then. So much for that battle. Anyways, I didn't really mean to go here anyway, so... It's perfectly fine by me. I want to go to Hickfield. Huh. Where's Mr. Wright? Maybe he's getting an examination again. How many does he need? Wasn't it just a sprain? 
Too bad, Polly. You wanted to show off your request to Daddy, didn't you? What? Me? No! Oh, that's a surprise. Let's just come back later, shall we? Damn it. Okay, uh... She wants to say anything more? Okay, let's go back and try to do some investigation, maybe? I don't know. Ah. Hey there, no messing with the crime scene. But, but we need to investigate. Hello, look, at stand. It says Eldune. I've noticed. Well, we have solved the case of the missing stand at least. Well, the circumstances could stand to be better. Can I check the tr trash can? No messing with the crime scene. We need to investigate. Investigations are to be carried out by professionals, scientifically. She's not going to let us check out the crime scene, is she? Hey, Apollo! My very unscientific analysis tells me something here is very suspicious. I think I know what you mean. It's kind of hard not to notice. I better check out what we came here to find at least. I already have that. Um... Okay, let me go to Eldunes, I guess. If he's even here, please be here. Oh, Mr. Eldune! Hello? Looks like he left. Damn it. We found his stand and everything. What about our free bowl? Oh, too bad. Looks like we'll have to wait a little longer for that bowl. So sorry. Aw, what a bummer. Okay. Okay, now I can apparently go to the Hickfield Clinic. Maybe. Yes! Perfect. Ah, oh, you're back. Run into some problems? Oh, Polly, didn't you want to tell Daddy something? Who? Me? No, I'm fine, really. What's this? So there's a problem. No, no problem. Actually, I got a defense request. A defense request? That is a problem. Huh? I've given up the court. I'm not a lawyer anymore. The request was for me! Alright. You're a lawyer, aren't you? He's doing that on purpose. I know it. So what about this defense request? It's related to the murder in People Park, actually. Guess what? We found Mr. Eldoon's noodle stand at the, cr at the scene of the crime. Did you know? Did you know? That's unusual indeed. Never heard of a noodle stand being used as a murder weapon. Uh, I think the murder weapon was something else. I mean you don't know what the murder weapon was. That funny detective lady won't let us on the scene. What kind of detective wears a lab coat anyway? A lab coat? Hmm, I didn't think she'd be involved with this. You know her? You could say that. So, you know her, don't you? I met her on a case. This was about 10 years ago. Holy shit, 10 years ago. <laughs> she was still a high school student at the time. <laughs> That's very cute. <laughs> I hope you can catch up. I won't make her about the same age as me. That's my daddy. He knows all the police types. Oh wait, maybe you know that other guy too. Other guy? That shining prince on the motorcycle. Prince? A <laughs> mysterious prince. Apollo, tell me about this prince of Trucy's. Indulge your concerned father. He was at the crime scene. He looked just like Mr. Gavin. Did he now? You know him? I guess he's his Christoph Gavin's younger brother. His brother? We're acquaintances, after a fashion. Clavier Gavin, rock and roll incarnate. God incarnate. 
Javier. What a lovely name. He's so dreamy. There's just one person in the world wearing a lab coat. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> I love it. Clavier, what a lovely name. Mads is such a fucking German stan that he named himself Piano <laughs> in German. <laughs> Achtung, baby. I didn't know Mr. Gavin had a brother. And what, and what was he doing out there? I have a feeling you'll be crossing paths again soon. Now, what was the problem again? Having trouble investigating the crime scene in the park? Yeah, that detective woman won't let us. Go to the office. Under the silk top hat, you'll find a bottle of white powder. Try taking that to this detective. White powder? I hope it's what I think it is. Yes, it's cocaine. I mean, that, that that does make sense. <laughs> What's it called in German, though? Like in in the German version. I love this case <laughs> so much. Just take it to her. It'll be fine. You'll see. Well, tell her I say hi. Oh. Clavier is better. <laughs> okay, let's 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 find this cocaine. <laughs> so this must be the silk top hat Mr. Wright mentioned. Let's take a closer look. Huh? Oh! You know what this is, Trucy? I remember finding some in Daddy's dresser when I was little. I thought it was sugar, so I licked it. He got mad at me. <laughs> this is getting more and more suspicious. Go talk to that detective. She's sure to know what that white powder is. Hold on, wait. Um, if I go here. Yes, mysterious white powder with the alleged ability to improve Detective Sky's mood. Oh god. Oh, this case is so crackhead. It's like on par with the Manju Buns one. God. I remember losing it in that case. Oh, Jesus. People park, there we go. Hello, Emma, we brought cocaine. Um, does this ring any bells? <gasps> Is that, it couldn't. Where'd you get that? I brought her from the office. You work at the Wright and Cole offices, yes? Uh, yeah. Sort of. Detective Sky, how do you know my daddy? D daddy? I'm sorry, who did you say you were? Trucy Wright, Phoenix Wright's daughter. What? Mr. Wright has a daughter? You seem shocked. Well... If you're Mr. Wright's daughter and you're his apprentice, then I'm available to help you in any way I can. Oh, uh, thanks. You can start by not calling me Mr. Wright's apprentice. This powder is used for detecting fingerprints. Fingerprints? I guess you might call it a memento from the time I spent with Mr. Wright. White powder <laughs> Oh, God. If you find any evidence with fingerprints on it, please let me know. We'll dust for prints. Well, she's quite the eager beaver all of a sudden. Uh... Oh, that's right. Anyways, now I can uh, check this properly, I guess. And this is Mr. Eldoon's noodle stand, obviously. It does say Eldoon in big letters, doesn't it? And that mark on his paper lantern there looks familiar. It's going to be a little rare telling him what with the corpse and all. Anyway, that wraps up three of our cases. 
That's right. Congratulations, Apollo. And leaves us with one case that's worse than all three put together. Murder. There's gotta be a good clue or two around here. You and your trash cans. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. Please, can't you see I'm doing my... Huh? L Look! Another pair of... Underwear! Wow, Apollo! You're a genius at finding panties! Stop saying that! Wait... These aren't... They're not mine! Could these have been stolen too? Mm. I need to go out here anyways. She's not here. Oh. <laughs> the panty seeking missile. <laughs> I'm going to search through the trash. I don't think we need to. Oh no, please, knock yourself out. Don't mind me. I'll be waiting over here. Just so we're clear, searching through trash isn't a hobby of mine, okay? There's a waste... What? Damn it. I didn't talk to Emma, did I? I didn't. A report came in late last night. The body was found much as you could see it now. Except it was a real body. But why? Why was a body pulling a noodle stand? If I knew the answer to that, I wouldn't still be here. Well, what was the cause of death? A bullet one to the temple. He was shot by a pistol. Pistol? Not the easiest thing to come by in this day and age. Unless you're a cop. Or a gangster. Incidentally, the victim's name was Palmeractus. I just received the autopsy report, in fact. Oh, thank you. I mean, really, what's up with this case? It's enough to make me want to run off, pulling a mysterious noodle stand behind me. That's so mysterious, actually. We should tell her, Apollo. After all, we know where the stand came from. A likely story. I didn't come here to play games, you know. Actually, we do know where the noodle stand came from. The noodle stand's owner is... The noodle guy. Who's the old guy? This is the proprietor of Eldun's noodles, Mr. Eldun himself. He's famous in this part of town. Not bad. I guess Mr. Wright picked the right kids for the job. That saved me a lot of work. Thanks. What sort of person was the victim anyway? You mean what did he do? He was a doctor. A doctor? I'm starting to see a connection here. Who? Me? I'm just a supervisor for this crime scene. Detective Sky. Hmm. I was out of the country for a while. I came back to be a forensic scientist. Ooh, were you studying abroad? Something like that. I was studying in Europe. Forensic sciences, mind you. And when I got back here, you threw me in the criminal affairs. Just like that. Why didn't you just become a forensics expert in Europe? Well... I suppose that was an option, but I had a lot of favors to repay to people back here. Favors? Wasn't she in high school when she left? What? What's I look for? I was involved in an incident before I left. Mr. Wright and his people helped me out. I owed them. Really? I had no idea. If she's been out of the country for a while, she probably doesn't know about Mr. Wright's current, um... State of affairs. Um, could you tell us a bit about the defendant? He's the only son of the Kitaki family, yes? Waki Kitaki. I don't know if he is the boss's son, but he's certainly throwing his weight around. Violently, in the detention center. I see. Why was he arrested in the first place? You are a defense attorney, aren't you? You're not his by any chance. Uh, I Actually, yes, I am. Well, we have a witness to the moment of the crime. Huh? 
and the witness called the police. And they'll be testifying during the trial tomorrow. What? Could you tell us a bit more about the victim? Well, let's see. Apparently, he's the physician at a clinic in the area. Quite well off, too, from the sound of it. The clinic's name is the Maractus Clinic. Hmm, maybe that's why the cop car was parked there. What? You've been to the clinic? Yeah, on a related issue. <laughs> I told the detective about the case of the stolen noodle stand. I see. So that means... Dr. Maractus stole a stand and pulled it all the way here. That would seem to be the case. Why? Don't ask me. Please, I just want to get the slippers. Let me get the heckin' slippers. Nope. Guess I can't. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Actually, uh, I gotta go back again. It's a knife. A shiv, to be precise. Ooh, lingo. The defendant, Wokikitaki, is the son of known gangsters. The police are assuming this belongs to him. Wait, but wasn't the murder weapon a pistol? Huh, look at this. There's a handprint on the shiv. A handprint? And there might be a fingerprint. Let's investigate. Right, first, choose the fingerprint you want to examine. Choose a fingerprint? Look closely at the handle. See, there is more than one fingerprint here. Those black spots? That's right. Pick the one you want to analyze. Right, let's get detecting. Wow, she's practically glowing with excitement. First, sprinkle some alum aluminum powder on over the print. Just touch the screen. I know how. Yes, I know how to do this. You all left that the print absorbs the aluminum point powder, so you just dust it on. And blow it off. B blow It's like whistling. You know how to whistle, 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 don't you? Just put your lips together. Yeah, I know. Wow, amazing. It's like magic. <laughs> Isn't it, though? Right, let's give it a shot. Incidentally, it's important that you cover the entire fingerprint with a powder. Hmm, good. Clear. Quite impressive. Next, to match the print, the police office has samples so you can tell whose finger this pr print belongs to. Hmm, that doesn't sound like as much fun as actually finding the print. Pick the person whose print you think it is. Okay. You probably have a good idea whose knife this is already. <laughs> so the fingerprints do belong to the defendant. Yes! Isn't it amazing? Ah, the power of science. It's my life. Apollo! That's perfectly fine. And I'm glad you could drop by, and thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great day. And I hope to see you again next time. Apollo, she's sparkling. And I'm dimming. Look sharp, spirits up. The real fight is yet to come. Chin up, Polly. The trial hasn't even started, and I'm already losing.
So, have you met the defendant? Ah, uh, no. Visiting hours are almost over at the, de at the detention center. You might think about wrapping up here and heading over. Good idea. I don't know what good it will do. You have a witness and a knife with prints. Have I mentioned I've got a bad feeling about this? Don't worry. It's like a right tradition. Some traditions I can live without. There we go, and then we go to the right anything in agency. And then we go to the detention center. I'm sorry, meeting hours for the day are all done. But but we still have three minutes! I'll put in your request, but don't expect anything. The father's talking in the pr private room with him. The father? You mean like a priest? I mean the suspect's father. Mr. Winfred Big Bigwins Kitaki himself. Now someone I care to meet. Die, you- You're the one on the way out, old- Ah, you're here. Whoa, this guy radiates power. Power. With a cute apron? You walk his la lawyer. Yes, sir! Well, I'm Big Wins Kitaki, fourth head of the Kitaki family. Capish? Uh, actually, I came to speak to your son. Mr. Justice. Y yes! My son's innocent. He killed no one. If you were found guilty, it wouldn't be good. Capish? Yes! I'm all about capishing. Capish loud and clear. You gotta do more than just understand to make it. You learn, though. Even if the lesson comes at the, at the end of your short life. I don't feel so good. What's the big idea, old man? You can't treat me like a kid no more. Not now. You know, I... I... I wanted to go to the clink. I like it here. You... Must be Waki. Godfather is that you? A G's not a G till he does hard time. Bizoy! <laughs> You'll see when I get out of here. Things will change. Silence. My apologies, Mr. Justice. He's usually such a nice boy. Forgive me if I have a hard time believing that. Ha! You can't take me under your wing this time, old man. You heard me. I don't need no trial. I did it! I think that's enough for today, Mr. Justice. Let me down tomorrow. So much for talking to our client. But we made so much progress today. We even found my panties. I had fun at least. Of course, the biggest mystery of all remains. How am I supposed to build a case for the trial? Oh, almost forgot. It's time for my show. Tonight I'm performing at the Wonder Bar. You should come check it out. Oh my god, that was almost two hours. <laughs> For the first part. I knew it was a long one. Luckily, the trial isn't very long. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure panties means panties. <laughs> Pants, on the other hand, is different. Huh? M Mr. Wright's not here today. He said his old foot injury was acting up. Old injury? He was old smiles yesterday. Yes, he smiled when he said we'd be fine. As long as you're there, Trucy. Yes, fine. We'll be fine. Here comes justice! I started my voice training at five this morning. Oh, do some now! I want to see... uh, here! Huh? Oh, okay. <clears throat> My name is Apollo Justice, and I'm fine! That sounds more like a self-mantra than voice training. Fine, I'm fine, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I knew it was you. Ah! Good morning! 
Yo, sup? Hit me with the guilty verdict, G. See if I care. You're just saying loose and let things go with the flow. You know what I'm saying? Uh, not really. Moki, don't be running your mouth like that in here. See, what's, that's the difference between me and you, old man. I ain't afraid of no cops. Real G's can't keep it real till they spend some hard time in the pen. You have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Sounds like they've both been voice training too, Apollo. My worst fears realized. The trial's starting and I still haven't had a real talk with my client. <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Wakikitaki. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Ready to rock and roll, Herr Judge. <laughs> it's him! The, per the guy from yesterday! He's the prosecutor? He's Mr. Gavin's brother. Long time no see, Prosecutor Gavin. Were you taking a leave of absence? You know that little band I started in my free time? Thing is, we got real popular. Hard to say nine to your fans when three of your singles go platinum, yeah? I see. To be honest, I was a little concerned. I fear that you might still be distraught over that one trial. Not to worry, Hell Judge. I wouldn't miss this day in court for the world. It's worth even more than VIP passes to one of my concerts, yeah? How could I pass up a chance to see the true strength of the little boy who bested my brother? It was worth cancelling a show or two. Understood. You may give your opening statements to the court. Before that, I was thinking, is the air in this courtroom not a bit serious? It is a court of law. That's no way to get the crowd jumping here, Judge. They're not supposed to jump. This is a courtroom. Achtung, baby. <laughs> Today we play it my way. What's that noise? <laughs> Sometimes you have to get up on up in order to get down to prosecuting. This is crazy. The victim, Pal Maractis, director of the Maractis Clinic. <laughs> God, my fucking German accent is awful. <laughs> but, though it's kind of true to life, I guess. <laughs> the scene, People Park. He was found pulling a noodle stand. What in the world was a doctor doing pulling a noodle stand? Yes, I believe. You will only find that out by asking the defendant right here, right now. Because it's an undeniable truth that he shot the victim. What do you mean, undeniable? If you were to glare at anyone here, Justice, glare at the punk in the defendant's chair. His crime was witnessed quite clearly, you see. Very well. Please admit this witness to the court. Nine. Not yet. Stop. You're not German. <laughs> First, here, there is a little matter to be cleaned up. Could you talk without the accompaniment? I swear I could see the guitar for a second. What is it, Prosecutor Gavin? The motive, yeah, Judge. Why did the little punk do it? Why did he kill the director of the Maractis Clinic? <laughs> Not so fast! The defendant doesn't have to explain that. Oh? But what if the defendant specifically requests to do so, as he did this morning? I want to give a shout out to all my homies, I believe you said. <laughs> what? What is right? <laughs> this is just a crackhead. I love this case just for the crack crackhead energy. You always say that on stage. You should hit this crowd with speed and ferocity. Sounds like you got you good, huh, Folly? Well, this is highly unusual, but the court will now hear from the defendant concerning his motive in the crime. <laughs> so... You, son, are the defendant, Wookie, are you? I ain't your son, old man. 
You step to a Kitaki, you had best be prepared to step strong. You step to a public official, you'd best be prepared to step into jail. You gotta hand it to him. Waki sure is guts. It's not his guts I'm worried about. Well then, the court will now hear testimony on the defendant's motive. From the defendant himself. Tell you one thing, that doctor was a quacker. Someone had to show him what's what. I was in his clinic about half a year ago. He messed up my up something bad. And then he just lets me go, without a word. See you later, bye. So I gotta go in, get another doctor to patch me up again. That was the day I done figured it out. No OD's gonna let that pass. That's why I went to his pad that night. I know, know what I'm saying? Sure. <laughs> You're saying you were one of the victim's patients. A lot of stuff goes down when you're keeping it real on the street. True that. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, tell you one thing. That doc was a quack. Was a whack. Hmm. Very right, well. The defense may begin the cross-examination. I can't believe this is the first time I'm hearing about all of this. <laughs> So you were a patient at the Miractus Clinic half a year ago. For what reason? And what you might call a mark of honor. Can you explain precisely what was wrong? We had a little run-in with the Rivales family. That was when I pulled a jack move. And ran into an ambush. G busted a cap right in me. According to my sources, you couldn't stand the stress of waiting and ran 15 minutes before the appointed time by yourself. Hey, I was more than a match for those guy. guys. So you were carried to the Maractus Clinic from there. Apparently, he was shot in the heart. Shot in the heart and he's still alive? He catch bullets between my teeth. But I never learned how to catch them with my heart. Well, it stopped just short of my thumper, you know what I'm saying? I would have been golden if it weren't for that whack dock. Can't even take out a stupid bullet. So as you say, the surgery was a failure. That ain't all of it, Holmes. What do you mean he just let you go without a word? What do you think it means? It's whack, that's what. I'm not sure what that means, but it sounds bad. It sounds as though Herr Doctor wished to hide his mistake. <laughs> this is why he let the defendant go. He's a liar, straight up. He's a better G than me. So this bullet is still... You know it, I can still feel it, right there in my chest, pressing up against my heart. Your words are like a bullet shot straight into my heart. Something to that effect. Incidentally, that's from one of our hit singles. No one cares. <laughs> well, that sounds like a straightforward case of malpractice. Word, Jane, man. We're in no accident, that's for shizzle. Hmm, it seems that there were issues with this doctor. The funny thing is that his name... The name of the doctor is Palmaractis Malparactis. <laughs> Love that. Man, putting him down was like doing the world a favor. Maki, please consult your lawyer before saying things like that. Chin up, Apollo. Back straight. But why did this mistake only come to light that day? It was found during the family health checkup. The family checkup? Uh, that was the wackiest thing of all. All of G's lining up, taking eye exams, and all that. Better to die young than fade away, bzzoy. A relief to hear. Eh? What's a relief? Oh, did your father not tell you? That bullet you carry so close to your heart. If not attended to immediately, 
It could kill you. Wh what? Yes. Herr Dr. Maractis had knowledge concerning this ticking time bomb he knew. Knowledge that could have saved your life. No way! That's whacked! There's poof. No checkup report. How ironic that you would kill the one man capable of helping you. You're almost as careless as he was. Ha 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 ha. Well, now that the place is hopping, let's get this gig started. S started? You've had enough of a warm up act, yeah? Time to hear from the witness. Marky sure is quiet all of a sudden. I'm a little uneasy myself. Is this Gavin's strategy? Who is this Benedict Cumberbatch looking as motherfucker? So you will tell us your name and occupation. My name is Wesley Stickler. By occupation, I take it you refer to the okay. He is the all bag type. Of course he is. Uh-huh. Okay, we get it. You're very smart. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. I wish she means to say that he's a student. A junior at Ivy University, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, in the Department of Science and Engineering. Filled with curiosity for all things, I spent my days in pursuit of truth, honing my... Herr Stickler, please direct said curiosity to the case at hand today. Very well, Mr. Stickler. Please testify to the court about what you saw on the night of the crime. You ask quite simplistically what I saw. I can't keep up with this. <laughs> That night, I passed through the park on my way home from shopping when I saw them. One man pulling a stand, another man facing him. I saw them quite clearly. The man facing the victim was the defendant. In his hand he held, yes, a pistol. It was pointed at the man pulling the stand. <laughs> oh no, I hate that. A shot! The bullet hit the man pulling the stand from the front, square in the forehead. Oh, did it now? Square in the forehead. Hmm. Was there anyone else in the park at the time? I could say with 100% accuracy that there was not. The pistol a witness refers to is this. The court accepts this into evidence. <laughs> Very well. Mr. Justice, you may cross-examine the witness. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Trucy? Why are you staring like that at the witness? A oh, man. I can't help but feel I've seen him somewhere before. Okay, hold on. Okay. He seems pretty confident in testimony. We always make the biggest mistakes when we're our most confident. He's got a weak point somewhere, Apollo. Find it. Right. Better give that testimony another listen. Yes, I get it. I get it. Uh... Entry point, right temple. Square in the forehead. Sweet. Whew. That's all of it. I think I have a chance. Is that you? Relaxing, I see, Herr Justice. Huh? Oh, uh, ahem. Objection! Once is quite enough, Mr. Justice. Apollo, pace yourself. This trial's not over yet. Uh, uh, right. Um, <clears throat> uh, look at this. The autopsy report. Is there a problem with the autopsy report? Um, right, a problem. 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 Yes! The problem is the location of the entry wound. The location? 
You testified that the killer shot the victim squ square in the forehead, did you not? Ah, I have already determined your angle of inquiry. Allow me to explain. It is quite simple, really. First, understand that when I say square, I speak not of geometrical absolutes. What I do, what do I mean by this? For example, the defection of a meter is. <laughs> okay, no, there is no way. You're not meant to actually follow what he's saying. Mm hmm. Mr. Justice. Yes? What's your objection to these uh, krypton particle things? This is the big time, and you are obsessed with something so small. You disappoint me. N no! I'm obsessed with something big! I mean, there is a bigger, less nitpicky problem here. Do tell. Just look at the autopsy report, and the location of the entry wound was... The right temple! The temple? Mr. Stickler, you said quite clearly that the victim was shot square in the forehead. That's a contradiction. Isn't it? God, you're so cute. It is, right? Finally. Objection! Herr Justice. Oh, Herr Justice. Yes? Your taxi tactics are outdated. Trying to shake the witness by objecting to trifles? Surely you haven't forgotten. The fatal wound your master suffered seven years ago. Phoenix Wright, was it? Look, I know the wound was in the wrong place according to the t testimony. <laughs> Hey, you have forehead. F forehead? Let us imagine you are walking through the park. You see two men facing each other, one with a pistol trained in the other. What would you do, you have forehead? Well, I... I guess... I would try to stop them, I'd probably shout stop! And you, Fraulein? Me? Well, I'd probably scream... Ee! And you, Herr Stickler, what did you shout, I wonder? <laughs> if the victim turned his head at the last moment... Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, thank you for jogging my memory. It sounds like an addendum to the testimony is required. As soon as the killer raised his pistol, I took action. Seize this at once, you two, I cried with composure. The victim turned in the direction of my voice, and a shot rang out, whereupon our cowardly killer, the defendant, appeared to have become frightened. Tossing the pistol aside, he fled from the scene. I see. So you attempted to stop the crime. Indeed. With composure. Well, maybe the criminal wouldn't have fired if you hadn't shouted like that. Th that doesn't really matter now, unfortunately. Let us consider this new testimony, shall we? Observe the diagram, if you would. The witness, Mr. Stickler, was it? Stood here. He shouted, Oh, stop, please! Or something of this nature. And the victim responded by looking in the witness's direction. If the killer were to have fired at just that moment, as we can see, the bullet would have struck the right temple in his, as in, re, in the report. That does seem to be the case. Witness the power of a junior in Ivy University's Department of Science. Very well, Mr. Justice. You may cross-examine the witness. Hmm... Two rounds. Interesting. Did you hear the gunshot at the same time as the victim turned? Indeed. I would say about the same time, to be precise. The victim didn't ask you for help. It can be said that he didn't have time to ask. He didn't even have time to take a single step. I'm totally sure that the killer fired because Mr. Stickler startled him. Don't say that too loud, Trucy. Please. Hmm. 
Hmm. I like that contradiction kind of sets. I like that contradiction kind of sad to see it go. Not as sad as I feel. We do now. At least the testimony is getting, getting a little clearer. She's right. Maybe I can find something to use in this new testimony. Oh, I already did this one. <sighs> Wait a second. Another misleading request. Yet you're so beholden to your own mode of discourse, you can't see how it affects you. Um, come again? Wait a second, you say? A second? Are we intended to wait just that, a single second, one sixtieth of a minute? That's hardly enough time to draw a breath, let alone make a statement in court. Now, had you asked me for a longer period of time, say three minutes, thirty-five seconds... Mr. Justice! Yes, Your Honor? Am I to understand you are objecting to the length of a second? Yes, I mean, no! Here, just look at the pistol. It doesn't have a single fingerprint on it. Ah, common ploy, made all the more common, I fear, by the prevalence of television. Criminals these days are loath to leave fingerprints. Wait, but you said the killer tossed the gun and ran. That's right! He didn't have time to wipe the gun for prints. Ah, the little girl sticking it to the university student. There's a song in there. I'm not little! <laughs> then let's think like adults, shall we, Fraulein? Eh? What if the killer, the defendant, was wearing gloves? Gotta admit, I didn't think of that, Apollo. Well, Mr. Justice, could the killer have been wearing gloves? No way. The record of the... <laughs> I don't think I don't think that's exactly what he meant The record of the murder weapon is very clear about one thing The fingerprints were wiped Which, which means some trace of prints remained Which contradicts your testimony If everything happened as you say it did He wouldn't have had time to wipe the pistol Well, maybe, but it does not change what I saw. The killer, the defendant. He threw down the murderous weapon from his hand and fled. Hmm. And this pistol was found at the scene of the crime. Strongly suggesting that this was the weapon he disposed of. That sounds solid to me. Well, Herr Forehead, any of your precious objections? What gives, Apollo? Let's see that voice training go to work. You know... I've only recently realized something. No matter how much you train your voice, it doesn't matter if you have nothing to say. What do you mean, nothing to say? Isn't it obvious from that wit from what the witness just said? Huh? Isn't what obvious? When he restated that he what he saw just now, he said he saw Wookie drop a murderous weapon. That's not the same as being 100% sure of what Wookie threw away. You're right. He's just confused because a pistol was found at the scene. Poor Mr. Stickler. It must be hard to be so perfect and yet so wrong. Well, it can't be said that I'm quite offended. Well, it is indeed true that- oh my god. What we can say for certain is that the witness saw the killer throw something. Does the defense have anything to say about this? Well, if what he threw wasn't a pistol, then it had to be something else. At least one person on the defense team seems to be thinking. Mm -hmm. I'll wipe that smile off your pretty face, Gavin. Perhaps you can inform the court as to the nature of this something else? What did the killer throw away before fleeing the scene? A knife. Is that a sword? I saw one of those on the late night movie last night. Great, a sleep-deprived judge. This knife was found at the scene of the crime. 
with the defendant's prints on it. His prints? This single piece of evidence proves two important things. One, that what the defendant threw down wasn't a pistol. Two, that, what the, that the defendant wasn't wearing gloves. Hmm, indeed. Or oh, her forehead? You're forgetting two other things you've just proven. Huh? One, that the man the witness saw was the defendant, Mr. Wakikitaki. Two, that the, that the defendant was holding a knife with the intent of harming the victim. Oh! Hmm, indeed. Mm -hmm. Never underestimated Gavin. It's a lesson here. This court is of the opinion that our witness is fond of making assumptions. In that light, I believe it would behoove us to hear about what really ha occurred. With less assuming, please. It is always the same with you people. Mark left the house on foot and five minutes later, his brother left after him. How long would it take for Mark's brother to catch up to him? Assuming that Mark never had to stop for a traffic light. Assuming, yes, that's what I said. Assuming. As if that were a probable situation at all. Yet here you are, assuming that my assumption is no better. Ahem. What this court assumes is that the witness will testify as to what happened after the shot was fired. I could not prevent the killer from leaving the scene. Nor could I simply leave the scene in good conscience. Ergo, I used my cell phone to call the police. Until the police arrived at the scene ten minutes later, I saw no one else. Why didn't you chase the killer? He was, as you say, a killer. Of course, I could have run him down, yet... What would he have done when cornered? Sadly, it takes more than an aptitude for solving quadratic equations to know that. Hmm. Did the testimony earlier not prove the defendant's presence at the scene? And do we not also now know that there was no one else there? It seems clear that we have our killer, does it not? Not it now, Mr. Justice. Better find a way to take this testimony down quick. You were certainly composed for someone who had just witnessed the killing. If one is to devote one's life to the pursuit of science, one must never flinch at the sight of a little blood, nor be so moved by a chemical discovery that one drops one's flask upon the lab room floor. Ooh, a cool answer. Very cool. Hmm, so nothing strange about how he acted. Trucy looks like she has something to say. Wasn't your first thought to call an ambulance? It can be said that I have dabbled in medicine. The injury I witnessed, namely a single shot to the head, tends to result in death. Ergo, there was no need for me to call an ambulance. Oh, a perfect syllogism. A proof in three parts. Exquisite. Simply exquisite. He actually looks like he's going to cry. Can you tell us in detail about these 10 minutes? Fleur, you're here! Look at this Benedict Cumberbatch looking ass motherfucker. I stood in a state of heightened awareness. Anything could happen at any moment. Anyone could appear from any direction. Is... Is that all? No one came. Nothing happened. At all. I saw it all, which is to say, I saw nothing. Those cheekbones. It was late at night. It's not odd to think there would be a few would be few people around at the park. So he just stood there, watching. Mm, not much to go on there. Trucy, if you've got something to say, by all means, say it. This witness is way too self-assured. There's got to be a weakness somewhere in his testimony. Do, 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 do. I have to press an old kill. Which way did the killer run? By that time, it was clear the killer had noticed me. 
Naturally, he ran in the opposite direction. I wouldn't mean he ran in the opposite direction from the Kitaki Mansion. Achtung! Don't even think about pointing out that he was going away from his home. All he had to do was loop back once he was out of sight. Uh -huh. I really know that that's where I was going. Uh -huh. I can't find a single problem with that testimony. Had enough at last, Herr Forehead? Maybe it's time to back off a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing fishy about that testimony at all. <laughs> it's so funny because like all of the prosecutors up until now have been like so vicious. And he <laughs> and Clavier is like, ha ha, forehead. <laughs> Appears there is no objection to the witness's current testimony. There are any number of ways to explain the lack of prints on the pistol, I assure you. Perhaps the killer really was wearing gloves, which wiped the previous user's prints off. Then, after the deed was done, this fell out of his pocket as he was throwing the gun away. A mistake befitting of a small-time punk, in my opinion. No. Oh. No! It seems we've come to the end of the line here. Oh, that can't be all. How unfortunate. It seems that you weren't cut out to stand on the same stage as me. Were you, Herr Forehead? And I believe this brings the cross-examination to a close. This court will now declare a verdict for the defendant, Wakikitaki. Trucy! Nobody move. What's the meaning of this? Who are you? There'll be no verdict in this court. Not yet. Wait. Are you one of the Kitakis? The Kitakis? You mean the notorious gang gangsters? See, here's the thing. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> but he studied in Germany. And he's such a <laughs> German boo that he just like pretends to be German for some reason. I don't know. If you don't want to see me give that pretty little girl a new smile, do as I say. Adjourn the court for 20 minutes. What? <laughs> German boo. <laughs> German for clouds. What? This court will not bow to. To pressure from the likes of here judge i see little point in further aggravating this gentleman uh, hmm. recess 20 minutes or i promise you we regret it wait how did you disappear so fast come to the defendant lobby apollo and i suppose i have no choice but to adjourn for a 20 minute recess Bailiff, catch that mysterious man! Wait, how many chapters does this have, actually? I'm just curious. I might be able to finish it. Trucy! Trucy! Quick, Apollo. Good show, good show. Tr Trucy? You're okay, I, I thought. <laughs> Don't cry, Apollo. Ugh, good for nothing gangsters. A water sound? Interesting. There are some things you just don't do. I'm pressing charges. Wait, just calm down, Apollo. Or else. Ah, what the heck is that? Surprised? This is one of my best tricks. The amazing Mr. Hat. You look marvelous, darling. He's a big hit on stage at the Wonder Bar. Yes, I am a big hit. Ha ha ha. Well, what do you think? Do you like it? You mean you... Trucy. 
There's some things you just don't do. I... I am pressing charges. Apollo, now is not the time to be threatening me. It's you who's being threatened here. Huh? Remember what you said to Wookie's father yesterday? You promised you'd save his son. But that testimony was rock solid. What are you suggesting I do? Look, once the judge declares a verdict, it's all over. If I can use my talent to stop that from happening, I will. Trucy, no more staged abductions, please. <laughs> and I know Phoenix right. Yeah, that would have a lot more punch to it if yeah, he is the spart in this one. <laughs> and also the fact that that's his daughter. So, you know. I'm not talking about magic, Apollo. I know when the witness isn't confident and perceive what he's feeling. It might not mean anything, but it's all we got. You can see what he's feeling? Think back, Apollo. Think back to the times when there was a contradiction in his testimony. All the times. All the times there was a contradiction. I don't remember. Um, actually, I don't remember them actually exactly. Good thing I do. There were two times when he made statements he wasn't confident in. And each time, there was a contradiction. In his hand, he held... Oh, yes, a pistol. It was pointed at the man pulling the stand. Tossing the pistol aside, he fled from the scene. He said the man tossed aside a pistol. But it turned out he wasn't sure. And sure enough, there was a contradiction. Well, that's true, but how does that help us? Didn't you notice anything? Whenever he made a statement he wasn't confident in, he displayed a certain habit. In his hand he held, yes, a pistol. And it was pointed at the man pulling the stand. Did you see it? The very moment he said the word pistol, his fingers got all tense and he fiddled with the corner of a page in this book. How am I supposed to see that? Well, I could see it. How else do you think Daddy went seven years without losing a game of poker? W what? I always sat next to Daddy during big matches. I could see what his opponents were feeling. I mean, that's how Mr. Wright won all those games. It's not cheating officially. I wasn't looking at their hands or anything. And I wasn't there all the time either. Daddy's quite good at poker after all, but not good enough to go undefeated that long. Great, so he cheated, but what does that do for us? I don't believe this. You have to listen to his testimony one more time. No, scratch that. You have to watch his testimony. Perceive the truth. Watch a testimony? Perceive the truth? The only thing I'm perceiving is that I'm going to lose. Not true. Daddy said so. He said you have the power, Apollo. Mr. Wright said that? Watch the testimony. Perceive his true feelings. Is she serious? Time's up. Sorry, I can't think of any other way out of this one, Apollo. What was that she said before the trial started? Huh, Mr. Wright's not here today. He said his old foot injury was acting up. Yes, he smiled when he said we'd be fine as long as you were there, Trucy. <laughs> Is this what he meant by us being fine? Well, methods aside, she did avoid one guilty verdict already today. Time to show this court what I'm made of. Get ready for justice! Let's do it. Apollo! You know, I'm starting to think I can do this. I knew you could do it all along. Oh, one more thing. Try to cover for Mr. Hat as best as you can. I just flew in from the coast, and boy, are my arms tired. Right. Court is now back in session.
Right, we're fine. Ahem. <clears throat> I'd like to say to the young lady standing next to you, Mr. Justice. Oh, you mean me? Don't you have anything to report? Anything concerning the mysterious phantom in the silk top hat? Ah, oh, right, him. Don't worry about him. I settled that. You settled that? Um, yes, it was an out-of-court settlement, right. Perhaps Fraulein would have us believe it was nothing more than a passing dream. A fantastic illusion. Now you see it, now you don't. Am I right? I think he's on to me. I wish it would stop being so... so cool. <laughs> Let us dispense with these nice... niceties and get straight to the matter. What are your plans for your gift... for our gifted witness? Right. The defense would like to request another cross-examination. Because... because I forgot to ask something. There was no issue with the witness's previous testimony. I will grant your request, however. But this court will not permit stalling for time. Understood, Your Honor. Don't forget, Apollo. When he isn't sure about something, he has a habit of fiddling with his book. I could not prevent the killer from leaving the scene, nor could I simply leave the scene in good conscience. Ergo, I used my cell phone to call the police. Alright. Until the police arrived at the scene ten minutes later, I saw no one else. I mean, it beats me. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm qualified to watch testimonies after all. Focus, Apollo. Find his weak spot. Focus. If only it were that easy. My ears hear what he says. My eyes see his expression. Do I have to do something more? What other, what other senses do I have? What's this? My bracelet? What's going on? Smell the defendant! <laughs> My bracelet feels different somehow. I think Daddy was right. You can see it, can't you, Apollo? You're almost there. Find the weak spot in his testimony. I know this sounds crazy, but my bracelet is trying to tell me something. So you called immediately after witnessing the murder. The police undoubtedly have a record of the call. Why not check with them? Wait, Apollo! This has to be it! Wait, you mean his habit? Forget Apollo. When he isn't sure about something, he has a habit of fiddling with his book. Yeah, we, I know, we just went through this. The only time he even had the book open was here. Which means, this is the place to look for his habits. I don't know how I know, but I know. You know what? It's my bracelet. It's different, somehow. I can feel it reacting to something about the witness. Your... bracelet? I'm not sure I get this focus stuff you were talking about, Trucy. But... I have a feeling that trusting my bracelet is the way to go. Okay, I just need to touch my bracelet as it reacts to the testimony. What's going on? I can see the witness's face. His expression, so clearly, it's filling my mind. I can see nothing else, hear nothing else. Apollo? Trucy, what's happening to me? This is what I meant by focusing. Focusing? In this state, you can see everything, Apollo. Everything the witness does. That's great, but this is kind of freaking me out. Just look for Mr. Stickler's switch, his habit. You remember it, right? <laughs> sure, when he says something he's not sure of, he fiddles with a page of his book. You got it. Right now, you're looking at the witness's face. And your eyes are sort of bugging out. But they are. First, move your focus of attention down to Mr. Stickler's hand. His... hand? You know what to look for now, but you have to be looking at the right place. She's right. I can only see his face like this. 
Time to try and changing my viewpoint. Okay, we get it. Perfect. Now you're really ready. Ready for what? Ready to perceive the truth behind the twitch. Perceive. Maybe he did it in his younger days? Because when he was younger, he definitely had a lot more of uh, the fun karma like movements. Like he did the finger waggle and like the, the wink and finger waggle thing. He did that and that was so uncomfortable <laughs> to watch. And I'm like, no. So maybe though, I'm not sure. Perceive. Try listening to the witness talk as you focus. Then watch for his habits. Right. You mean when he fiddles with the page? That's right! That's your signal to look closer, to perceive. Find his weak spot, and I guarantee we'll be able to give him the royal flush. Spoken like a true pokerhead's daughter. I'm a magician, thank you very much. So I have to pay attention to his words and his fingers. Don't worry if you miss it, you can always try again. Right, look out, nervous twitch. Here comes justice! What did you know? Gotcha! gotcha! I, I saw it, just now. I could see it. M Mr. Justice, do you have something to say? All this bagging of desks, it's quite bad for my circulation, you know? Mr. Stickler, allow me to ask you a simple question. Why did you fiddle with the page of your book just now? The very moment you mentioned your cell phone. What are you talking about? I'm curious now about the cell phone of yours. Mind if I ask a few questions? What to ask, what to ask? Mr. Stickler, please show me your cell phone. Uh, why? Whatever for? Is he stickler for the truth? <laughs> show me and you'll find out. Well, I can't. I don't have it, you see. You don't have it. Mr. Stickler, is this your cell phone? Ew, where did you get that? That's the phone from yesterday. Look, a cell phone. Someone dropped it beneath this tire. If the car moved, it will be crushed for sure. Hmm, I wonder if it belongs to the doctor here. How strange, Mr. Stickler. Can you explain why your cell phone is sitting here in my hand at this very moment? Wait a mo minute. What's the meaning of this? This cell phone was found yesterday. In the Maractus Clinic garage. The Maractus. Why, that's where the victim lived. <laughs> that's impossible. Mr. Stickler, you lied to the court, didn't you? If your cell phone is here, how could you have called the police? <sighs> yes. It, it's true. I didn't have my cell phone that night. That is why it, it can be said that I have called that I called the police from a public payphone. A payphone. So you didn't call on your cell phone after all. Where was this payphone located, Mr. S Miss? Yeah, Mr. Stickler. Well, to indicate it with a startlingly high deg degree of accuracy, it was right around here. That's quite a ways from the park. But, but why did you lie? There can only be one reason. He didn't want the court to know he had lost his cell phone. Because it was found. In the victim's garage. <laughs> yeah. They, like, say it's a thing, but then they don't actually make it a thing. <laughs> what are you saying? Mr. Stickler, you broke into the Maractus Clinic garage on the night of the murder. This cell phone tells all. But, but, but that's ridiculous. That makes it sound like, like I snuck into his, this fellow's garage to commit some crime. As though I were trying to kill him. Well, Dr. Maractus was killed that night. Well, yes. But no, this line of reasoning has to be against the rules. Yes, it's true, I lost my cell phone, but you can't prove that I lost it that night. 
Hmm. Well, Mr. Justice, if that cell phone was dropped the night of the murder, it does raise considerable suspicions as to a connection with the crime. Now's your chance, Apollo. Connect Mr. Stickler to the crime. Oh, he's already connected enough. I just have to prove it. Well, do I have a piece of evidence that can do the job? Can I prove the cell phone was dropped on the night of the murder? Of course I have evidence. Ooh, I like your swagger here, forehead. Hit it. The court will see this evidence, Mr. Justice. Hit it, as they say. The evidence that proves the cell phone was dropped on the night of the murder is... The mirror? No. <laughs> the thing is, he doesn't even like start calling him her forehead because of his forehead. It's because he like keeps like mentioning Pal's forehead. He keeps like being like, you hit him in his forehead. And he's like, okay, her forehead. Because he doesn't actually have that big of a forehead. Uh... Hmm. Well, Prosecutor Gavin. No comment here, Judge. Okay, no dice. Apollo, remember where we found the cell phone? If it had fallen on the ground before that night. That's right, the cell phone would have been crushed. Your Honor, one more chance, please. Mr. Justice, keep this up and you'll run yourself out of a life, life's worth of, worth of, of chances. Mirror. That's a side view mirror. As it so happens, Dr. Baractus's car was in an accident. That took place the night of the murder. An accident? An accident. It happened a little after 9 p.m. just outside People Park, our murder scene. Dr. Maractus's car hit a pedestrian. What are you trying to say? In the absence of a mirror, it's clear that, that the car was parked after, after the accident. Which means it was parked there after 9 p.m. on the night of the murder. If your cell phone had been dropped before the car was parked in that garage, then it would have been crushed. After all, it was lying on the ground, right under the wheel. Ugh. Ergo, Mr. Stickler. The only time you could have dropped this in that garage was after 9pm, the night of the murder in the park. Mr. Stickler, you know what this means? You did break into the victim's garage that night. This is most unexpected, Mr. Justice. Are you naming the witness as a suspect in the murder of Palmeractus? No, stop, this is too much, this can't be happening. P -p -p prosecutor say something! I suppose it's, it is worth saying this. No connection has been found between Wesley Stickler and Palmeractus. That is, other than this. I believe our next testimony will be most... Revelatory. Is the witness prepared? Y yes, Your Honor. I know that face. That's the face of guilt. Clavier is king shaming Apollo in court. Listen, I king shame the games <laughs> so much, especially like further down the line. There's like this, this one part, and I believe it is in like the next game. Or someone gets like tied up in ropes and it's like, you're not into this, are you, Apollo? And I'm just like, can we not? <laughs> the night, yes, I went to the supermarket. I must have dropped my cell phone on, on my way back. I remember that. <laughs> it just gets so weird all of a sudden. And when I was walking through the park, I happened to witness the crime. I, I saw the killer. The victim, the stand, all as clear as day. It was him. I saw the defendant at the scene. At the scene. Scene. <laughs> yes, but your cell phone was lying in the garage. Ah, yes. Well, as you can see, my model of cell phone has a defect. It is given 
to rolling. It's quite a pain when I drop it alongside the road, you know. Rolling? <laughs> Looks like a normal cell phone to me. In any case, Mr. Justice. The cross-examination, please. That's funny. My bracelet didn't react at all during that testimony. His nervous habit must not be acting up. I didn't sense anything either, actually. Looks like you're on your own this time around. Right, no problem. I hope. Here comes justice. <laughs> hmm. This part of the testimony is the key. I know it. Should I press him about the killer, the victim, or the noodle stand? Noodle stand. You happen to remember the noodle stand? Quite well, yes. For a student of the sciences, keen observation and healthy curiosity are vital. I remember everything. I could even read the sign. I believe it said, uh, noodle. Yes, that was it. For remembering something quite well, it sure took you a while to tell us. And thank you for telling us that a noodle stand sells noodles. Very enlightening. Well, Mr. Justice? Hmm. What about that sign could be important? Could that be important? Okay. So the sign on the noodle stand said noodle. It appears the defense has just obtained a vital piece of testimony. Is this noodle stand's broth really that delicious? I'll have to go sample the wares one of these days. I think that's worth adding to the testimony as well. Hmm. Whatever sort of noodles that stand sells, it can't match up to IVU's cafeteria. Some apply to the school merely for a taste of our smart noodles. I wouldn't mind a taste of that myself. Did it now. Because we have it here. And... Spin... Oh, looky here. Here it says noodle. Huh? Look at this, Apollo. Mr. L. Duin spelled his name backwards on this side. Um, I think that says noodle. As in L. Duin's noodles. Huh? Oh, I get it. So the name of his store is the same whether you read it forwards or backwards. Yeah, I guess it would be. Well, except for the last S. Apostrophe S. Then, how about a store called Team Meat? Uh, close, but that would be time might <laughs> backwards. And what kind of store is that? Why, a store that sells meat. It's not meat unless it's team meat. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Trucy. Love that. Okay, I can't read that. Objection! Objection! You're absolutely sure the sign read noodle. Why, well, just last week, my professor offered me this praise. At least you have good eyesight, Stickler. I'll give you that. It read, without a doubt, Noodle. I see. What? Why well, you're looking at me like that? Is that pity I see in your eyes? Let's take a look at our map, shall we? So you're claiming that when you saw the sign, you were standing... Here, was it? Although it would have been a bit hard to read the sign from this spot. Y you think so? Mr. Stickler, I'd like you to please take a lo another look at the stand. And to carefully read what the sign says. See? The sign actually states the name of the stand's owner. Aldoons. Al Al Inconceivable! I'm certain it was definitely Noodle for sure. Positive. I'm afraid your professor was wrong about that eyesight. I wouldn't be so quick to jump to that conclusion. The sign he saw changes everything. <laughs> the witness says he's this the sign said noodle, and he saw it right. What would you say if I told you that there is one spot from which the sign would be read the way Mr. Stickler claims? What? Mr. Justice, show us the spot. The witness actually... Oh, sorry. The witness actually viewed the stand from this location. The witness was standing here, on the opposite side. How do you know that? 
When viewed from the south, the sign on the stand reads Aldunes, as we know. However, observe the other side of the stand. Oh, this side says Noodle. Exactly. The name of the stand is split between the front and back signs. Mr. Stickler, you lied to the court. You witnessed the crime from the northern, northern side of the park, not the south. You got me. So what? So, so what? What does it matter if he saw the killing from the north or the south side? It makes no difference at all. He's right. Travel far enough to the south and you will end up going north. Viewed on a global scale, directions are utterly without meaning. Actually, maybe he's right. What does it change? It changes everything, Apollo. Trucy? Remember his testimony from before. Though, to be honest, I'm a little scared of where this is leading. <laughs> the killer and the victim are facing each other here. Then, at the moment the killer raises his weapon, Mr. Stickler shouts. At which point, the victim turns his head to look, and the killer fires his pistol. <laughs> That's why the bullet hit him in the right temple. No contradictions, right? Right, but if Mr. Stickler was standing on the north side of the park, that reverses the whole scenario. Completely. If Mr. Stickler shouts from where he is now, and the victim looks in his direction. The bullet would have hit his left temple. In other words, someone standing at point K couldn't shoot the victim in his right temple. It's impossible. Plus the job of the witness of not committing perjury. Th that's right. So now that we know that Mr. Stickler was standing on the northern side, the wound location takes on an entirely different meaning. Indeed. You're absolutely correct, Fraulein. What meaning? The entry wound was on the right side of the victim's head, correct? Well, the right side of the victim's head is north. North. Ah! But that's where the witness Wesley Stickler was standing. Correct. So if he was standing to the north, then the only person here who could, who could have shot the victim in the right temple was Mr. Stickler himself. Order, order, order. Wow, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. She split this whole case on its head while I was still figuring it out. Clarify one point for me, if you would, Herr Forehead. What now? Why are you truly accusing this college student? Of murder. Well, I can't say he exactly looks innocent. But something still doesn't feel right. On all the country roads. No, please, looks aside, I'm really a nice guy. All my friends say so. Let's hear what the defense has to say. What are you going to do now, Justice? Should I really accuse Mrs. Stickler? Accuse of another crime. I don't think Wesley, Stick Wesley, Wesley Stickler is a killer, but he's not innocent either. His unusual silence tells me that much. Mr. Stickler, you seem unusually quiet. Tell us why, now. The, the word confession isn't in my dictionary. Yeah, forehead. I'm afraid it falls to you to elucidate Herr Stickler's silence. Mr. Justice, you did say you were accusing the witness just now. For a crime other than murder. Your reason? The court's all ears. Ugh. I know he's guilty of something. But what crime other than murder is there? Do I have evidence that shows his involvement in some other crime? 
Your evidence? The court all lies, Mr. Justice. Show us evidence that points to the witness's involvement in a crime. The panties? The evidence is this! What? What is that? Women's underwear? Those are mine! <laughs> Don't look at me like that! And they also take Order! 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 Mr. Stickler! While I can't say this comes as a shock. It's not what it seems by Pythagoras' theorem. What? On the night of the murder, just past 9 p.m., a young girl catches a panty snatcher red handed. Briefly, she gives chase, but the snatcher flees and hides himself in no other place than the miraculous clinic garage. <laughs> Incidentally, These panties were found in the exhaust pipe of the car there. He's a pervert, pervert, mm hmm Presumably, he was trying to hide the evidence of his crime. But, well, actually not. This is so weird. This entire episode is just strange. Ergo, while you may not be a murderer, you are guilty of panty snatching in the first degree. Please, hear me out. It's not what it looks like. Order! 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 Mr. Stickler, you should be ashamed! It's... not... what... it... See? <gasps> so, are we to understand that you were silent not because you were guilty of murder, but because you lacked the courage to admit your theft of this girl's undergarments? Um, perhaps you are not aware that my school's name was originally written IV. I stands for intelligent, V stands for valiant, see? In your point. I'm not done. Now I'm a major in the science department. And what does science teach if not curiosity? Yes, we of the IVU, science department, are valiantly curious. No challenge is too daunting, and what greater challenge to science than a mystery? Come on, you're talking about a girl's panties here. No, you do not understand. A mystery is the unknown, and the unknown is unacceptable. And my friends, when it comes to mysteries, those panties are the promised land. From the moment I first laid eyes on them, I was compelled to investigate. For science, a full-sized car tire was only the first mystery those panties revealed. A uh, tire? Yes, I saw her do it. She pulled the tire out of those panties. But that's not all. First, there was a tire, then a stew pot, then a frozen chicken. One mystery after another. It was... it was magic! Oh, I remember now. He's one of the regulars in the audience at the Wonder Bar. Huh? <laughs> He's talking about my magic panties trick. I just don't understand. A broom from a pair of panties? It mocks the very laws of physics. A broom? And a frozen chicken, Trusy? Whatever happened to doves and bunny rabbits? M Mr. Stickler, you stole this girl's panties to understand a magic trick? You say panties, but they are so much more than that. For me, they are an object for serious study. I wonder. There has been a recent rash of panty snatchings in the area. Were they all you? I, I am sorry, but I did it for science. Each time I spied a pair of panties flapping in the breeze, Oh my god. <laughs> Still, that leaves one thing unexplained. When it comes to mysteries, those panties are in the promised land. Sounds almost like a loot flirt. <laughs> he is strange, that for sure. <laughs> ah, you refer to our witness's other lie, yes. The witness claimed he saw the crime from the south, but was in fact in the north. Indeed. Would anyone care to explain why he lied about that? Be my guest here, forehead. Me? 
Did I not hear you correctly? Did you say you do not accuse the witness of murder? Why then did the witness lie about his location at the time of the shooting? Or have you no idea? Apollo, there is something about the way the diagrams are arranged right now. When you think about it right near where Mrs. Stickler was standing, isn't there a... Well, Mr. Justice, what say you? Do you have any evidence to show why the witness lied about this location? <laughs> the evidence that shows my why he lied is this. What? More panties? How many panties are you carrying in your pocket here, forehead? These are the last. Honest. And these were found in the trash can at the park. I'm looking at the diagram. We can see that, th that the trash can was right next to where the witness stood. Mr. Stickler, you didn't. Alas, I'm a failure as a scientist. I can't unravel the mysteries of the universe. I can't even unravel a pair of panties. So, these panties are your handiwork as well. Th that night, I have been chased, hounded into the Miraculous Clinic garage. Weeping in frustration, I was forced to abandon my price. Don't you see how I felt? Believe me, I'd rather not. I hid in the garage for a short while. Then abandoning the panties, I made for home. To avoid the office where the girl works, I went towards the south entrance. When I saw them hanging there on the clothesline by a giant mansion. A giant pair of panties! Apparently, he didn't know those bloomers belonged to the mob. I had them, safe in my pocket, ready to take home. When I stumbled upon a murder! The murder of Dr. Maractus. I reported what I had seen, but as I waited for the police to arrive, I got scared. What if they searched me? That's when you... That's when you disposed of the bloomers? Yes. It was a severe blow to the pro progress of science, but one that had to be born. A fascinating, if disturbing tale. And I believe this brings today's proceedings to a close. And I'm more than pleased to dismiss this witness for the remainder of the trial. One last thing, if I might. Yes, Prosecutor Gavin? Regardless of where we ended today, some vital points were made. Namely, that the defendant, Wakikitaki, was at the scene of the crime. And he was pointing a weapon at the victim. One more thing. Waki Kitaki has a clear motive. Indeed, the defendant Waki Kitaki is still the prime suspect in this case. The only suspect, in fact, assuming there was no one else on the scene at the, scene at the time. Yet, a murder, murder mystery remains. <laughs> the location of the wound in the victim's right temple has yet to be explained. The court requests further investigation from both the defense and prosecution. Yeah, baby. No problem. Very well. This brings the trial for the day to a close. Court is adjourned. And we're only three hours in. Perfect. We got like three chapters left or something. Something like that anyways. Let me just double check here. No, only two. Only two chapters left? Really? Damn! I thought this was so much longer. <laughs> what a train wreck that was. I'm glad we made it out of the trial alive. Really? I had fun. And Wookie made it through the day too. Everyone was too obsessed with panties to bother with the real case. But it was good publicity. Imagine the crowd at my show tonight. You should come, Polly. Yeah. The amazing Mr. Hat will be making an, an appearance. Hi, folks. I'll be here all week. That's about enough of him. Hello? Ah, oh, Miss Tiala. Thank you for today. The trial went well. Oh, right. No problem. Do you think Walkie will be okay? Well, he's not guilty. Yet. Please, you have to help him. We're supposed to get married next month. Oh, congratulations. Uh, way to put the pressure on a guy. 
Please let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Are you sure about marrying into the Kitaki family? I'm fine with it. And I love Waki with all my heart. Oh, that's so sweet. So it doesn't bother you that you'll be, um... Married to the mob? I don't think so. My parents are against it, of course. Say, where did you and Waki first meet anyway? Good question. Miss Yala doesn't look like the type to have gangster connections. Oh, we met at my old job, actually. Ah, of his romance. She's not very forthcoming with information about herself, is she? Did you know that the boss is trying to get out of the business? Really? Mr. Kitaki wants to quit being a gangster. He's trying to transfer his assets into a normal company. He only announced it recently out of the blue. I hear there's quite a lot of confusion in the ranks. Hmm, I wonder if this explains that apron. I can't imagine Waki going along with that. <laughs> He's highly motivated, isn't he? Um, that's not the word I would have used. He said, I'll be the next big boss and keep the family alive. I think it's at that age when boys want to make a mark on the world. That's not the way I would have put it. His father moves in a lot of circles. He's really focused on profits. The Kitaki family has been making a killing recently. Again, not the way I would have put it. But Waki says it's not about the money. They have, they have the gangster tradition to uphold. Oh, a generation gap. They've even got the ever-classic what about the family business thing going. Usually, it's the father worried about tradition. Can I ask you a question about Waki? I understand he was operated on by the victim, Dr. Maractus. Apparently, yes. I was in this clinic about half a year ago. He messed up my op something bad. And then he just lets me go, without a word. See you later, bye. So I gotta go in, get another doc to patch me up again. Yes, it sounded horrible. Waki has always been found of, fond of fighting, I'm afraid. I'm not sure he qualifies as fighting when pistols are involved. Mr. Gavin was saying his life might be in danger, wasn't he? No, that can't be right. I'm sure he was just trying to scare us. And it's scary to think that a surgeon might make a mistake. But it's even scarier when he tries to hide it. I'd like to know a little more about this operation. Maybe it's time to pay the Maractus Clinic a visit. I should be getting home now. Look, is in your hands, Mr. Justice. R right. Leave it to me. Apollo, I think you're only making her more nervous. Sorry, I'm new at this, okay? <laughs> it's alright. I believe in you. No, not examine. I wanted to go move. There we go. Can we talk to Waki? Hmm, looks like Waki is out for questioning. I really need to talk to him. I guess we'll come back later. Okay. Excuse me. Yes? The other suspect is all through with questioning, sir. The other? Ah, oh, you mean the panty snatcher. Leslie Stickler. So they arrested him too. Alright, let's have a little chat with Mr. Stickler. I hope I don't regret this. He is a valuable witness. He is a bit precious. I'll give him that. Please, keep this brief, if you, if you would. I'm quite busy. I need to finish this paper. No, it's you! Mr. Stickler, we'd like to have a few words with you. Very well. As long as there are, f there are few. Nothing would make me happier. Believe me. No, not present. Mr. Stickler, on the night of the murder, you stole. Wait, I can't help but feel that I'm being misunderstood. How, exactly? Yes, that night, I obtained a pair of panties, it's true. However, it was my burning curiosity that drove me to do it. Nothing more. You wanted to know the trick to my panties, right? You were here too? Oh, great Trucy, teach me. Eh? I must know the secret of your panties. 
My very existence hangs in the balance. Please, make me your apprentice. Apollo, help! I don't know, I think he'd make a great, lovely assistant. Don't say that, Apollo. Could you relate what you saw the night of the murder to us one more time? Why not? Though it hardly differs from the testimony I gave in court. The defendant was there in the park that night. Of this I'm quite certain. He was pointing a pistol, or something like that, at the victim. That's when I shouted, Stop, you two! Let's resolve this like gentlemen! And the next moment, a shot was fired. And this is all- and this is all true. Really? My panties are gone, my innermost heart revealed. What further reason could I possibly have to lie? I can't think of anything he'd want to hide more than panty snatching. True. <laughs> Listen, this entire case is strange. Ah, oh, damn it. When we first get the fingerprint powder, um, Apollo for sure thinks it's cocaine. <laughs> When I say that this is a crackhead case, I mean it's a crackhead case. I can't think of anything he'd want to hide more than panty snatching, true. It sounds like Wookie was at the scene of the crime after all. Oh, I wish it weren't so. Okay, Kitaki Mansion. Yipes, she's back. Hey, you two, over here. Uh, us? Yo, little plum, what's up? I think all this gangsterese is a negative influence on Trucy. Yes. I heard you retrieved my bloomers. Well, I was just doing... Ah, a man speaks clearly and takes credit where it's due. You caught the thief, didn't you? Uh, yes, sorry, I caught him. You're cute when you're nervous, Polly. I'll deal with you later. Enough about bloomers. What about my son, Wookie? Wookie? Uh, well, he's... Um, clearly. Yes, ma'am. This is why I was kind of hoping you would avoid coming back here. You want to get cut, kid? Well, let me just give her back her bloomers, I guess. Um, about these. Hey, my bloomers! Thanks for that. I owe you one. Um, I thought you might like them back, so... Eh? Oh, no, no. Why don't you keep them as a souvenir? Oh, no, I couldn't, really, but... I could use those in my magic panty sack. I'll pull shivers and pieces of go... And pieces and godfathers out of the, out of them. Great! Now your props are going from bland to dangerous. He's really everything you'd expect in a boss's son. I'm going to be a gangster, dude. Life does have an appeal for that age, particularly for boys. Oh, by the way, um, Alita is 21 and. Uh, Wookie is 19. Okay, that's fine. I was worried it was gonna be a, a worse, like, it got there. But it's fine. What? Don't look at me like that! He was shot in the turf war about half a year ago. Yes, we heard the story from Wookie. But he didn't tell you the whole story, you know? Even if he had a pistol then, he couldn't have shot anyone. What? He acts like he's hard, but he couldn't shoot anyone. He couldn't shoot someone to save his life. I should know. I'm his mom. Our words do have a certain weight to them. Hopefully, when this is all taken care of, he and the boss can sort out their differences. The boss? You mean Wookie's father? Didn't seem to be on the best terms, did they? It's true. One of our pistols is missing. So the murder weapon was from this mansion. I kind of figured, given the difficulty of obtaining a gun these days. None of the rank and file have access. Only the boss, myself, and Wookie could have taken it. 
I see. I'm sure the cops will continue tromping all over the mansion because of this case. Maybe this is a sign that it's time for a change. <laughs> she doesn't seem too concerned, at least. Yeah, walk his fiance. They're getting married next month, correct? I suppose. She's been staying over lately. You don't look too happy about that little plum. How'd you guess? Even I could tell that. Could you tell us more about her? Okay, brought her home one day. Says he wants to tie the knot. I can see why. She's so pretty. Oh, she's pretty enough, but you know. Nah, it's probably just me being suspicious. Stay in this business for too long. And you start to only see darkness in people. You get a nose for it. A nose for people. A nose for trouble. Hmm, I wonder what the problem is. It's like a gangster's only version of female intuition. A boss may act tough, but a boy means the world to him. But Wookie seems... well... It seems like he's against his father's position. Ah, it's to be expected. We're in a bit of a transition right now. We're trying to cut our ties to the shadier side of the street. And do more on the up and up. Wookie well, isn't too enthusiastic about the change, it's true. But why the change? Is the gangster thing just not paying the bills? <laughs> it pays, but we need a lot of money right now. Clean money, that is. I see. Hmm, something must be up. He'll see things the way the boss sees them. One day. Now I can go back to the trash can. There's a trash can. This is where we found the mirror. Come to think of it. Wasn't there something else in here? Something near the bottom. Look at the paint on these. That means... These must have ended up in here after Mr. Wright's accident. Maybe they're connected. Let's pick them up. Hey, it's Mr. Eldoon. Oh, Mr. Eldoon. Hmm. What's wrong? So you found my stand. That's why I'm here to thank you. <gasps> and now it's a crime scene, and they won't let me have the have it back. That's also why I'm here. Got no other place to go. Ah, I see. How can a noodle stand be a crime scene? That's what I don't get, Trucy doll. Even in death, he's after my neck. I tell you. <laughs> Can't even cook an honest noodle. He? Even in death. You mean the victim, Dr. Maractus? I tell you, it's enough to drive a man to make his soup even saltier. Remind me never to eat his noodles when he's in a bad mood. At Stan, for generations, it served up the very best noodles us Eldoons can make. A tradition of noodles and salty broth. It's more than a Stan, it's history, I tell you. Watch what you say or it might become Drew. It's a great story, Mr. Eldoon. A single stand, passed down from generation to generation. Of course, to be honest, I didn't plan on doing it. That's right, you said something about that. About you rebelling against your pops, was it? A memory, Trucy doll. I, I was a go-getter back in my day. Until my friend next door butted in. In the end, I was left with nothing but this dusty old stand to earn my fortune. Mr. Eldoon, I don't mean to pry, but what exactly did you do before you became a chef? Ha! <laughs> the old noodles lie, that's what I say. I'm starting to get an idea of what he did anyway. He stole my dreams and left me with nothing but noodles. And now I don't even have that. Mr. Eldoon, if I might ask, what exactly happened between you and the Maractus Clinic? Eh? Eh? Couldn't help but sense enmity here. There. Enmity? I hate him. Uh, hated. Him acting like he smells like roses when he's rolling in the mud. 
Excuse me? He's the only doctor at that clinic, you know? Pretty impressive, huh? I'll tell you the secret to his success. Mob. You mean... The Kitaki family? I'm always having one of them turf wars or whatnot. Always an injury or two that needs fixing. Maractus saw a chance for some business. So he started giving the Kitaki family a good deal. A deal? Every fifth operation for free. He stole the idea from Pops. One free bowl of noodles a week, he used to say. Can a doctor just decide to do that? What about the insurance companies? Oh, no doubt it's illegal, but it got him in good... It got, it got him in good with the family. Pretty soon he was getting all the business in town. Leaving me here in the dark. Up to my neck in soupy noodles. And I think I figured out Mr. Aldoon's former occupation. Can't hurt to ask, Apollo. Mr. Aldoon, or should I say Dr. Aldoon? Figured it out, did ya? That's right, I was a doctor, a surgeon, until the year before last. So Mr. Maractus was your rival. You know, like those onions they put in the soup broth? Um, yeah, kind of. You take a spoon, you drink some broth. Those onions will find their way in there. For people who like him, well, that's just fine. For people who hate him, I hate onions, I hate them. Always sneaking in from the side, getting in the way of the good taste and spoonful. Listen, this is like one of my favorite Ace Attorney characters. <laughs> guy Eldoon, the noodle guy. I'm not even joking. He's great, honestly, and I love his noodle hair. <laughs> well, that's what he was. An onion. Onion boy! <laughs> that's what I called him! <laughs> onion boy, huh? Oh, interesting. That's funny. Right? He's great. So... You weren't exactly friends. Huh. Me and Palmaractus. More like Malparactus. Ever since preschool, we were getting in each other's face. No matter what I did, sure enough, he'd come following along. And he'd do it better than me. Just blow right past without so much as a howdy. I see. That's right. I was a surgeon long before he was, you know. And that no good onion boy comes along. <laughs> Well, Druzy, looks like we found ourselves a new suspect. Don't say that. Thanks to him. I was forced to trade in my scalpel for a label. Sorry, pal. Didn't mean to weigh you down with an old man's ramblings. No, it's fine. My way of apology. If you ever get yourself in a spot of trouble, you drop by. Huh? You're investigating Maractus, aren't you? Yes. Well, you want to know... About a doctor. You ask a doctor, that's all I'm saying. You just think of me if you need something, Trucidol. Right! Thanks, Mr. Eldoon. Hmm. I guess the time spent listening to him complain wasn't entirely wasted. Um, I was hoping to meet with my client. Moki Kitak is just finished questioning. I'll bring him out. Great, finally! Yo, sup, my little imposter? <laughs> what did you call me? Tazam, is you? Sorry, G. Thought you were Alita. My little imposter sure is a strange nickname. It's a clink thing. You wouldn't understand. Did I say imposter? I meant poster, like... I meant poster, like poster girl, right? Or poster, like poster girl, I don't know. If you're going to drop part of that, why not drop poster and just call her... Girl. Because she's so much more than that, G. She's like... She's like an angel. Fallen angel. So, what can I do you for? 
You don't look so chipper today, Wookie. Worried about your, um, heart condition, maybe? That was the wackest thing of all. All those cheeks lining up taking eye exams. Better to die young than fade away, bizzoy. A relief to hear. Yeah. What's a relief? Oh, did your father not tell you? That bullet you carry so close to your heart. If not attended to immediately, it could kill you. Man, I ain't trying to hear that. Man fights to protect what's valuable to him, you know what I'm saying? I meant my fallen angel. Hey, you go get a leader for me. You're my lawyer, aren't you? Lawyer, not gopher. So I hear you're to be married next month. Straight up, we pour the nuptial party out on the, on the stoop. Okay. Alita, oh snipple cakes. She's so fine. What is happening? I think he's smitten with her in his own weird way. I was wondering, how did you two meet? I asked Tiala, but she was very vague. Huh? Well, man, if she wouldn't tell you, I best hold my tongue, you feel me? What? Man, what's well, past is past. She knows that. When I'm with Alita, I feel like there's things worth protecting out there, you feel me? My Alita, she's down with that all the way. I can't understand a word this boy is saying. Yeah, exactly. Hmm, so both of them are mum about their pasts. I think he needs an exorcist! <laughs> Do you think you could tell us what happened with you and Palmaractus? There's something you should know. Wikitakis are having that having what you might call a feud with the Rivales family family family. So about six months back, I got into Rivales turf, packing a knife, right? And you were shot? Coldest thing I ever seen. One shot to the heart, but my homies weren't too late. It's a miracle that I lived. It's already considered one of the seven wonders of the Kitaki family, you know? You know that? So you were taken to the Miraculous Clinic then? You should have seen their faces when they wheeled me in. You can't just let the boss's son die, you know? I hate to have been in that doctor's shoes. Mr. Kitaki's scary enough when he's not angry. But the bullet that hit you... It was never removed. It's still threatening his life. A doctor, he did it on purpose! The Revalis paid him off, I'm sure of it. I need to hear more about the night of the murder, that much is clear. Life in the family is a G thing, it's about being a man. You know what I'm saying? No. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not up with my G things. I'm not even sure what a G thing is. My old man, he's gone soft. He says the old rival gang days are over. He just wants to make money. Isn't that a good thing? Man, there ain't no soul in making money. Better to live fast and die young for jizzle. <sighs> Wait till I run the yard, and everyone will know what, what time it is. That's right. OJ time all the time represents. Apollo, why does he keep talking about old guys? I don't think that's what OJ means, Trucy. About these weapons, the pistol and the knife. They belong to the family. I snuck him out that night. So the killer, Mr. Stickler, says he saw that night was. I guess it was me. I was there after all. Ugh. We're finished. Um, yo, Wookie. Do you think you could tell us exactly what happened that night? Heh. <laughs> you don't beat around the bush, do you? I like your style, shorty. I like his design. Um, actually, there's a question I've been wanting to ask you for a while now. That is, uh, did you do it? Did you shoot him? I don't know. Eh? The day of that, of that checkup when I found out about the bullet in my heart. I borrowed a gun from the family stash. I figured I'd give that doctor a taste of his own bad medicine. Uh-oh, I don't like where this is going. But, you were carrying a knife, weren't you? Well that, 
Yeah, well, never can be too careful, I say. So I am on my way to the clinic, right? And I run into him in the park, and he's dragging this noodle stand behind him. Wait, you didn't put him up to that? Like, you know, in the movies? If you value your life, you'll bring the stand. Shorty, you're more whack than I am, and that's saying something. But I was serious. The thing is, I don't remember what happened next all too well. You don't remember? But the way I see it, if there wasn't anyone else there that night, then I guess it probably was me who did him in. You know what I'm saying? Okay, sweet. Bye. Mm, move to people park. Sweet. I don't know why I always move over. I don't need to do that. Wait. There's something I've been missing. Oh, okay, I, I, I get it. It's so specific sometimes. Back to Eldun's house. But we go over here and we... There we go. Well, you gotta check out this clinic, that's for sure. Yeah, but what about the guard? No harm in asking. Um, excuse me. Hey, it's you two from yesterday. It's the same officer that was standing up at the park yesterday. Our business is over in the park, isn't it? The clinic's off limits. It's not involved. B but what part of off limits do you not understand? Show me proof that the clinic is connected to the incident in the park or beat it. No harm in asking. No gain either. No point in sticking around here, I guess. There we go. Now we can go back to People Park. Indeed. L look at that crowd over by the park. Probably people trying to get a glimpse of the crime scene. But why are those girls screaming? I think I just heard one say, Oh my god, it's him! Wait, a motorcycle. Ah, oh, if it isn't here, forehead. Prosecutor Gavin. Some fans found me on my way out. Just my luck. Oh my god, oh my god, he's so cool! That's the screams. New album just came out, you know? Try waving to them. They love it. Oh, oh, he's so cute! <laughs> He's so excited. It doesn't matter who waves to them, see? This is surreal. Um, so you were here investigating. And I was on my way home when my hog gave up the ghost. Your hog? My motorcycle won't start. A clogged exhaust pipe. Too bad. It looks like such a nice bike, too. Hard to believe that it could break just from that. Ugh, it's my fault. I think I was using the wrong oil. Cars, motorbikes, and they're all the same. Plug the exhaust, and they won't run. Wasn't this like debunked by Miss Mythbusters? Ah, machines. Tell me you share my angst here, forehead. I ride a bicycle, actually. <laughs> ah, <laughs> in any event, I am off to the shop to get a fixed. The detective in charge of the scene isn't fond of me in any case. The detective? You mean the one in the lab coat? Yeah, she's in a foul mood too. Be gentle. Auf Wiedersehen, baby. Oh my god! There he goes! <laughs> and the forecast for the park today gloomy skies. Well, nothing to do but head on in. Let's hit the park, Apollo. Sure. Huh. Does something about this scene look different to you? The blue tarps are gone. Maybe that's it. Yeah, I think you're right. Look over there. The white frog detective from yesterday. 
She seems to be apologizing reverently to the trash can. She's under a lot of stress. The investigation is probably not going so well. Hey, you there. If you're going to talk about someone behind their back, do it more quietly, please. Oh, Detective Sky, hello. You seem as gloomy as ever. This is miserable, miserable. I just got a new kit and I can't get the stuff to work. And everyone's all smiles for the glimmerous bop. Glimmerous? Does she mean Prosecutor Gavin? More to the point, doesn't she mean glamorous? When he walks his shiny change, catch this. This tiny change cast the sun and glimmer in my eyes. It's distracting. Speaking of distracting, uh, I guess I had just have to accept the fact that I lack talents. Sounds like she's trying out some sort of new forensics technique. Detective Sky, you know Mr. Wright, correct? How do you know my daddy? I want details. Ah, uh ah. -huh. Uh well, he helped me out a long time ago. You might say he saved me. Wasn't she saying something about getting involved in an incident? I can't stand it when things are vague, especially in a case. I went to study to become a forensic scientist in Europe. But you're a detective now. Well, I failed the test. But you know, rank and title don't matter. What matters is what's inside your heart. I've always thought that too. And my heart is full of science. That's why I bought this kit through mail order. And I'm going to test it out. Test it here before the forensics team arrives. Are you sure that's okay? I won't lie. I'm not fond of the man. Those glamorous types always drop me the wrong way. Glamorous, right? The prosecutor should be cool of wit. And furred of brow. We get it. You have a crush on Edgeworth. Too bad man's not straight. Less glimmerous and more simmerous, you know? No, actually, I don't. Well, that and what happened seven years ago. Prosecutor Gavin was the one who stripped Mr. Wright of his attorney's badge. W what? Really? He was the one? You mean you didn't know? I thought you were one of his boys. I'm neither a boy nor one of his... But let's see what she has to say. Um, what exactly happened seven years ago? <laughs> Have you played the investigations games? Because, oh boy, can you say daddy issues? <laughs> daddy issues up the wazoo. <laughs> I never actually heard the details. And investigate. It's better you learn it for yourself, anyway. Do you mind me asking exactly what it is you've been doing? Squatting down on the ground like that? Oh, you wanna know? Do you? Well, I splurged on a new toy. You splurged. Nice. Oh yeah, everyone just... Apollo just is just hit differently. <laughs> really. <laughs> you mean it wasn't police issue? What is it? I see a roller and glue? This is a footprint analysis, analysis kit. Oh no, that's not what she has in investigations. Footprints? It was raining on the night of the murder, which means that footprints were left. Oh, does that have anything to do with those blue tarps? Right, the ground was muddy, so I had to protect it as it, as it was that night. Ever wanted to know exactly where someone was standing? Like your panty-snatching student witness, for instance? Aha! So with that kit! Right. What? You wanna try this stuff out? Huh? Are you sure? I mean, we're sort of on opposing teams and all. Oh, psha. You're friends. Oh, I haven't played the latent crossover. I'm saving that one for last because I haven't played it. 
Though I, I, I know that technically, like, it happens, like, after, after the trilogy. But I don't actually know if it's, like, I don't think it's made part of the main canon, right? Which is why I want to, like, save it for later. To tell the truth, I'm not so good at doing this. I guess I'm a little clumsy. I could use your help. Oh, I'm good at stuff like this. I used to make magic bunnies out of paper mache. Footprint analysis, huh? Well, should I give it a go? Yes, try it. Okay, I'll give it a go. That's the spirit. Right, allow me to explain. Ahem, <clears throat> one moment. She's reading the instructions for a kit. Why does this not fill me with confidence? First, we have to pick the footprint, or in this case, shoe print we want to anal analyze. I'm taking the liberty of marking all the shoe prints in the park. Well, which shoe print should we start with? If we're going to verify the defendant's account, here's the place to start. Shoe prints are prepared to be examined. Ooh, this is so interesting! Right, here goes. First, pour the plaster into the print until it's full. You try it. How am I supposed to do that? Just touch the screen where you want to pour the plaster. Like this. Hmm, that doesn't look too hard. If you run out of plaster in your beaker before you're done, you have to start over. Not bad. You're handier with that than you look. What's that supposed to mean? On to the next step. Um, dry the plaster until it turns white. Right. Just touch to direct the, the dryer. There, give it a shot. Peak gameplay. Looks like it's hardened nicely. Let's take a look. Hmm, yes. That's a good one. Next, the ink. Ready for the next step? Use the roller to ink just the shoe print part. Hold on to that roller tight now, and roll it up and down. Keep going till you get enough ink on there for a good print. Right! Now the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's take our print. Ready? Here goes! Let's see if we get a match. And I want to see what all their shoes look like. Interesting. Of course. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Are they supposed to be noodles? Oh, I love that. The attention to detail sometimes is fascinating. Really. Is great. So the shoe prints belong to Wokikitaki after all. I like how they just like have like all of the people's shoe prints for some reason. He was in the park on the night of the crime. Wow, I can almost see the science at work. Don't you love it? Oh, nothing feels better. She is definitely way more into this than I am. Just let me know if you want to do some more. I'll be here, solving the... Solving the case. It's science. Well, that certainly brightened her mood. Detective Sky, mind if we give it another go? Right on! I'll leave no print to anal analyze, I say. Now to pick which print you want to analyze. Okay, looking good. Next, to dry the plaster. Huh. 
Okay, let's take out the mold. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's so strange. Hmm. Yes, that's a good one. Next, the ink. You know, I... How does she, like, keep the distance between the two parts? <laughs> is what I don't get. Right, now the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's take our prints. Ready? Here it goes. Let's see if we get a match. Yeah, that's him. So these shoe prints belong to Wesley Stickler. This confirms his testimony, the final version of it at least. Now we know where the panty snatcher was standing. Mind if we give it another shot? I believe you're beginning to appreciate the wonder that is forensic science. For some reason my eyes like kind of hurt. <laughs> I'm fine though. Pick the prints, here we go. Okay, looking good. Next, to dry the plaster. Yes. Okay, let's take out the mold. Hmm. Yes, the good one. Next, the ink. Right now. Right, now the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's take our print. Ready? Here it goes. Huh. That's a funny shoe print. Is that even a shoe? It is strange. So smooth. Except for the part with the leaf. I can say without even looking that this print doesn't match any print on our list. Hmm. A mystery print. Look at... Okay. Hmm. The bottom is covered in paint. Huh? What's this weird shape here? It looks like the leaf was stuck to the bottom when the wearer stepped in some yellow paint. So the outline was left when the leaf was removed. I got paint on my hand. Apollo! I saw you try to wipe your hand on my cape. Ah, siblings. <laughs> they say the Maractus Clinic. Hey. What? This slipper. Look right here. I think I see a toe mark. A toe mark? You think we can get a print of that? Sure. Toes have prints just like fingers, do you know? Yeah, but do you have their toe prints too? The fuck? <laughs> this little clue might be a coal mine. Oh, there's one problem. The police station doesn't keep a record of toe prints. So we won't know whose it is. I guess that would be too much to hope for. Well, th that makes sense. Still, it might be useful somehow. Let's analyze it. This print is far too smooth to be from a regular shoe. It is a shoe print of some kind though, that's certain. Still, you have to wonder what it's doing here. It's right next to the Eldun's noodle stand does make one wonder. Hey, you. Yes? Why are you so quiet all of a sudden? You wouldn't happen to have something in mind. Something that might have left this mystery shoe print. This mystery shoe print does remind me of something. 
I'm pretty sure I've seen something that could would leave a print like that. You know, I think I have our culprit right here. Well, I think it's these slippers, actually. Slippers? How, what would slippers be doing out here? Look at the bottom, see? It's covered with paint, except for... See? Right here. Hey, that spot is shaped like a leaf. What if a leaf was stuck on the bottom and then came off when the slipper stepped in paint? Makes sense, doesn't it? Sorry, that was Apollo. Makes sense, doesn't it? Wait, something's written on them. The Maractus Clinic. Exactly. The Victim's Clinic. Wait, that means... Someone from the clinic was involved. Why is she just standing there eating? Um, Detective Sky, I have a favor to ask. What? Can you get us access into the Miraculous Clinic? The police won't let us in. They say the murder, murder and the clinic are not connected. And it's off limits until we prove they are. I should be able to do something for you, yes. Eh? <laughs> really? You did my work for me here with the shoe prints. Seems like I should return the favor. Thank you, Detective Sky. Here, show this to the police officer on duty. Right, Maractus Clinic, here comes justice. Before that... Do, do, do. Let me see how does um oh, present no check a leaf mark on the bottom familiar also inside the inside it's a slipper There we go. I wonder, could this be a print? Why would there be a finger? Oh, you mean a toe print. Good call, Apollo. I bet we can analyze it just like a regular print. This could be a vital piece of evidence. like a big toe maybe wow i feel like the case is solved already what's next we have to match the print right right let's match it wait the detective didn't give us a list of toe prints apollo oh good point maybe we should ask her get some expert advice i guess so not sure she really qualifies as an expert there we go that's what i want to do yeah, she doesn't have anything to say. Anyways, now we can go to the Maractus Clinic. Hmm. Oh. Hey! Ha! Huh, you two again. When, oh when, will you learn? Look at me however you want. You're not getting in today. I wouldn't be so sure if I were you. Look what we have. What's this? Detective Sky. Yesterday it was Prosecutor Gavin. Today it's Detective Sky. Who are you two, really? Now he's suspicious again. You got the orders. I gotta let you in. Have fun. Thanks, Mr. Officer. Let's hit it, Apollo. Interesting. Huh, kind of an at-home sort of place, isn't it? This place has a connection to the murder in the park. I'm sure of it. The police guy out front wasn't so sure. Beyond it being where the victim lived. It looks like the police team's gone home for, for the day. There might be some clues lying around. Let's get cracking, Apollo. Do -do 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 -do. 
These must be the slippers for patients at the clinic. And the same as the pair we found, of course. Look, a single pair is missing from the rack here, too. And ours have paint on the bottoms. Which means they were taken out of here on the night of the murder. Right. The paint's from the hit and run after all. And what were a pair of clinic slippers doing in that trash can? And what were they doing at the scene of the hit and run? There's a single pair of sandals here. Wait, but why would there be sandals here? Unless they belong to one of the patients. Maybe it's a visitor that's come to see Dr. Maractis. You think they'd use his house entrance instead of the clinic entrance in that case. And if this patient or visitor isn't still here, why'd they leave without their shoes? Better take a closer look at these, just in case. Sure, just steal the shoes. Hey, Apollo! You think that this... Huh. This could be a toll print. Maybe we can get prints off of this. Let's try it out. Perfect every single time. Hey, it worked! Now it looks like... A big toe, maybe? But wait! I mean... It's great that we got the print, but... Is there such a thing as a list of toe prints? Ah, good point. If there is, Detective Sky didn't give it, to, give it to us. Which means we can't match this print. This seems like a good time to ask a detective's advice. Yeah, good idea. Look at all these bowls. They're from Aldoon's noodles. There's Mr. Salty. Then I think we figured something out. I think we have. Mr. Aldoon must do takeout. Not exactly what I was thinking. All the bowls have been washed clean. I think we found our first clue, Trucy. Look, the store says doctor's office. I think this is the victim's private office. It's not locked. Too bad. Why too bad? I like opening locks. It's kind of a hobby of mine. Who are you and why are you okay? Like those little bike locks? Don't ever don't even bother putting them on when I'm around. That's probably not a hobby you want to tell too many people about. Huh Apollo, that sound it came from behind this door. Someone's in there. L let's check it out, Trucy. Breaking! I left through that win window. Wait, Apollo! You're too late to catch them now. It must be her experience as a panty snatcher chaser talking. Well, we should tell the police. Let's check the room out first, Apollo. If we call the police now, we'll lose our chance. You're right. She's better at this than I am. Well, one thing's for certain. This clinic and our murder case are looking pretty related now. Oh no! Aw, good night. Kind of an expensive looking lamp, isn't it? Hey, the bulb is broken. Broken? Don't you mean burned out? No, our cat burglar must have dropped it. But why is it standing up on the floor like that then? Hey, look at the cord. Huh? There's a red splotch on a part of the cord. You think that's... blood? It's a little bright for blood. Almost pinkish. Something's definitely odd about this lamp, that's for sure. What a cute little safe! Hmm, looks like a four-digit lock. Someone's already entered in two numbers, Apollo. Seven, nine. Wait, do you think... The burglar just now was trying to open it. I wonder what's inside the safe. 
Hmm, is there any way we can figure out the last two numbers? Well, we know the first two are seven and nine. Maybe there's something in the court record. Something that can help us figure out the, the last two numbers. Hmm, I wonder. I got just the thing. Well, I have an idea. I knew it, Apollo. What is it? Well, all we have to know is what buttons have been pressed. We can use this to find out what the next two numbers are. When you press the buttons, you have to touch them. With your finger, right? It would leave a print. When you open a safe, you don't press any other buttons but the right ones, right? So if we can find the buttons with fingerprints, I'll have the safe code. Not bad, Apollo. See the oily finger residues clearly. Look at seven and nine. These are glove marks. The burglar must have been wearing gloves. Well, we might not be able to identify the burglar, but we can open the safe. Let's give it a shot. First try, baby. It opened. This looks like a medical charge. There's an x-ray in here with it. An x-ray? Hmm. Can't make heads or tails of it. And I can't read the chart either. It's all in medical speak. But the names are easy enough to read. Look like patient. It says, Wokikitaki. So this is Woki. Our client's chart, huh? Why would this one chart be here in the safe? Let's see. The physician's signature says Palmaractus. Eh? What is it, Apollo? Look here where it says who filed the chart. Let's see. Nurse Alida Tiala. Alida Tiala is Woki's fiance. That's one Ida. Uh, Alida? What, what did you say? That's one Ida too many. Uh, Palalo? <laughs> Never mind that. What's her name doing here? How should I know? Though, I guess it means she's on staff at this clinic. Odd that she neglected to mention this before now. I'm sure she had her reasons. So Alita Tiala worked at the Maractus Clinic. And she had access to Wokikitaki's medical chart. You got the EMY wrong, Apollo. Apollo, 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 Apollo. I'd be very interested in to find out what the chart chart says. Who could help us decipher this? This looks like a bullet hole. Hmm. You can still see the bullet sticking out of it. Why is it in the middle of a safe? Hey, the bullet came out. The tip is all squished. Not surprising, given that it was fired into a metal safe. This bullet's got a story behind it, that's for sure. Ah. Of course he's not fucking here when I need him. Anyways, the tension center we go. If he's even here. Well, the time of the decision is upon us. Which one of our two jailbirds we want to talk to? Excuse me, both detainees are currently in questioning to corroborate their accounts. Mr. Stickler and Wookie? Both of them? I pity the questioner. I guess I'll be back then. Okay, I thought I was done, but apparently not. Ow. People park. Ah.
Nope, wrong way. I know that face. That's the face of someone who's made a discovery. Hey, how did you know? You can't fool someone trained in the ways of science. Next, she'll have us analyzing face prints. Let's ask the sky to help us, Apollo. These sandals. That's quite a clear print there. A toe print. Too bad we don't know whose toe it is. Well, there is a way of finding out, of course. There is? What? All you need is a sample of the same toe print of another shoe, for instance. Alright, so if the prints matched, you would know the same person wore both. Hmm, do I have another shoe worn by the same person? Got one right here. I think I just might, actually. Really? I'm beginning to suspect something here. Detective Sky, can you compare this sample with this other print? This pair of slippers, toe print and all. Ooh, the print on these is nice and clear too. That makes our job easy. Can you analyze it for us? Of course, hang on. Bingo! Gosh, I'm good. Hey, we were the ones who found the prints. A perfect match. The same person wore these sandals and slippers. I was afraid of that. All you have to do is find out who these sandals belong to. Or do you already know? I can't say. Not yet. Well, that's one big s that's one big step closer. To the truth. Back to Hickfield. So much back and forth is driving me insane, but it's okay. Ah, <sighs> off oh, here we fucking go. Ah, the prodigal attorney returns. Welcome, Apollo. I heard you did well in the trial today. Here to discuss something? I could use a little diversion. What did Detective Sky say? If you want to know something, you have to investigate it yourself. Mr. Wright, tell me what happened seven years ago, please. I want to know. I need to know. You certainly didn't waste any time getting to the point. Seven years ago, I was standing in the courtroom on behalf of a client. The case involved the death of a certain magnificent genius. I'd be surprised if you hadn't heard about it. It was all over the news, I remember that. You were up against Prosecutor Gavin, weren't you? Yes, he was only 17 years old at the time. 17 years old? That's still high school! He took the bar exam abroad, in Europe. They're progressive over there, you know? I was defeated by a 17-year-old newcomer. In my shame, I left the practice forever. I fucking cried at this. <laughs> That's all. That's all? How could that be all? What do you mean? What about what they were saying on the news about forged evidence? They said you forged evidence and had your attorney's badge stripped from you. Tell me, how does it feel? How does it feel to stand here before Phoenix Wright, the forging attorney himself? How does it feel? I don't want to believe it's true. But what about what happened in my first, first trial? Didn't you notice in today's trial? There was a single piece of forged evidence. Talking about evidence that shouldn't have existed. A naughty magician's trick. <laughs> I don't see you jumping to my defense on this one. Maybe I did forge evidence, maybe I didn't. It doesn't really matter now, does it? I'm not an attorney anymore. That's the only truth you need to know. Mr. Wright. Looks like he doesn't want to talk about the accusations of forgery. For now. Hmm. 
I'm crying, Angel. Daddy's back and Daddy's... Oh, you again? Do you always have to announce your entrances like that? Man, my old man, he... Man! Now I'm all in the funk and it's all his fault. One can only assume that his father tried to teach him a lesson and failed. Clearly. You two got your work cut out for you, straight up. Of course, I don't care if they lock me up. I'm ready to go. Some days, I wonder why I do what I do. Hey man, you won't see me bugging about one or two guilty charges. But what if you're found guilty of murder? Hey, it's all experience, you feel me, shorty? Like a badge of honor. They don't give the death penalty, do they? You didn't really do it, did you? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. If I've learned one thing today, it's that silence speaks louder than words. Man, my old man is whack. Disappointing, that's what he is. I heard he wants to leave the mob. Over my dead body. I spent my life trying to keep it real, being an OG and never stepping down. Now my old man wants to go soft. Fine, let him. Just leave me out of it. <sighs> the day I get out of the clink. That's the day Alita and I start the next generation of the Kitaki family. Please don't talk as though it's assumed you're going to jail. For my sake. Huh? What's that? Some kind of x-ray? Wait. That's right, Wookie. It's yours. Hey, look. I don't smoke or nothing. I'll live long, right? I don't think he gets it, Apollo. Ah, take a closer look, here in particular. Where it says, Nurse, it's signed Alita Tiala. Huh, you lawyers do your homework. So, you met Miss Tiala when you... Yeah, I met her at the clinic, so? Could you tell us a bit more about the circumstances of your meeting? Fine, fine. I'll tell you how we met if you want to know that bad. About half a year ago, I was shot during a little turf war with another family. I was ready to die, sure. But they came in and got me. Hauled me off to the docks. Maractus Clinic. That's where I met her. My fallen angel. You mean Alita Tiala. She was scared of me at Ferns, first turns out. You know what they say, the bad guy always gets the ladies. Right. She was done with that clinic some, anyhow. So I was like, I'll take you on, woman. Straight gangster style. And guess what she said? What did she say? Come on, give it some thought. She said it real quiet, like, on the down low. Know what I'm saying? I'll leave. If you'll marry me. So, that was the proposal? You know it. An oath of love. Right there in the hospital room. Just like that. The op was done, and we were out of there. See you later, bye! Um, about that op... Yeah, and it goes so well after all, did it? I know about the report. I know it's still in me. This health checkup was the boss's idea, you said. Yeah, can you imagine? What's the point of living healthy when you're a G, you know what I'm saying? But didn't you learn about the bullet at the checkup? Yeah, oh my god, my ear itches. That's when I knew that doctor had to pay. Figured I could get that cap pulled after I got my revenge. Hey, I'm still living large now, aren't I? Incidentally, had you ever had a health checkup before? Nah, my old man suddenly gets this idea that we all gotta get checkups. I guess he's getting old. Older, I mean. Wookie, you don't happen to recognize these, do you? Hey, sure I do. I was the one who bought them for her. For Miss Tiala? Yeah, a birthday present. She's got mad little feet. Mad. So cute, man. So these sandals are hers. Yeah, I kind of had a feeling. What's up with the funky vibes? <sighs> okay, anyways. See you later, bye. Do, 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 do. Back to Aldun.
Streldoon. We've been looking all over for you. What's the matter, Trucy doll? Hello, show him what we found. Nothing like expert advice. I suppose he has a doctor still. <laughs> Mr. Eldoon, is everything okay? I'm just so happy. I just thought my doctor days were gone for good. <laughs> Mr. Eldoon. Um, Mr. Eldoon, could you take a look at this? Hmm. A medical chart? Hey, you shouldn't go around taking these from clinics. Why the sudden silence, Mr. Eldoon? What? What's going on here? That's what we want to know. That chart belongs to my client. He's on trial, on suspicion of murder. On trial? That's crazy. You can't put him on trial. He's ABD. A A ABD? All but dead. He's knocking on the pearly gates and someone's about to answer. Can you tell us why? Well, permit me to speak as a surgeon. You listen up good now, son. No way. It's like he's... It's like he's a completely different person. Well, according to this chart, this Wookiee Kitaki feller is not doing so well. He's got a bullet right up the side of his heart. That's right. Yeah, but this chart talks about the post-op. In other words, the operation is already finished. But you can still see that bullet stuck in there. Why would it still be in there after, we op after the operation to remove it? Well, about the only reason I can think of is it was too tricky to operate on. What? Well, it's snug as a bug there next to the aor aorta, which is connected to the heart. Heck, that scrap of metal is just surrounded by blood vessels. Kind of a miracle. Two millimeters to either side and there'd be some serious bleeding going on in there. Not something your average doc would be e eager to fiddle with. Y you mean? It took a miracle to get that bullet stuck where it is. It'd take more than a miracle to take it out. It'd take a magician. Um... I'm only up to making rabbits disappear. I haven't learned bullets yet. Of course, with the heart pumping and lungs working, that bullet's on the move. I give him another half a year tops. But, but what is operation was already half a year ago. That's why I'm saying you're out of time. This kid shouldn't be on trial. He should be on, a, be on an operating table. Great. Just great. How could Dr. Maractus do such a terrible thing? How could he just leave that bullet in there? I got a pr pretty good idea of how he felt. I'm almost done, actually. With this chapter and also with, like, the entire thing. An emergency operation. He's got the kid's chest open on the table. And he finds that bullet. That's despair right there, Trucy doll. Cold despair. Despair? Well, the only thing I could do is sew the body boy back up. He wasn't exactly in the situation to go admitting he couldn't take it out. The Kitakis. You bet. This kid's their only son, I hear. So he skips the operation, and Lucky's back on the street, living his life. Of course, it's only a matter of time before his heart hemorrhages, and he drops cold. How awful. And which doctor would they take him to? Maractus. He's got enough ties to them. They could probably cover up the truth of what happened. That's just horrible. He left Wookie to die. There's a darkness in this world, Trucy doll. Waiting, hungry. Compared to it, these gangs' turf wars are like kid games. When you're up against real evil. Well, it don't matter if you're weak or strong. It'll take you all the same. You were a surgeon, right, Mr. Eldoon? You could operate on Wookie, couldn't you? wish. What? I'm afraid there ain't nobody in the country that could. Maybe not even in the world. So, so lucky. He's real lucky to be alive even now. No. And there's one problem. Hollow? This chart. Look at the nurse section. Alita Tiala. That's right. 
the separation was how they met. Yeah, the problem is she knew. She knew about Rocky's condition. Guaranteed. <gasps> Why didn't she ever tell him? Doesn't make sense. If she knew her patient was in serious danger, I don't think she wanted to get that second operation before getting engaged. What was she thinking, Apollo? What were you thinking, Alita Tiala? Sweet. Last chapter. This is it. The big day. Did you get any sleep? Yeah, I went to bed at 1 a.m. or so. Oh? What time did you wake up? 3 a.m. That's only two hours, Apollo. But at least you have me. And the amazing Mr. Hat. Here's looking at you, kid. Good luck today, Apollo. Th that voice. Hey, uh, did you sleep? Mr. Wright. I was going out of my mind with boredom, so I signed myself out earlier today. Somehow, that place makes big piano playing at the Indochine. Indochine? Don't know. Pasta joints seem almost fun. Howdy! Do you know who Prosecutor Gavin's witness is today? Take a guess. Hmm. How about Little Plum? <laughs> that Sherman tank of a mom. Nope. Guess again. That's too bad. You know. Speaking of moms, you need to find me a new mommy one of these days, Daddy. It's barely morning and you're at it already, Trucy. <laughs> okay, see, this is why I don't buy their father-daughter relationship. So, Mr. Wright, do you know who the prosecution's witness is? Alida Tiala, your client's fiancé. She's going to be a witness? But that seems odd. Why would she testify against her own fiancé? You have to wonder what Gavin's up to. Something's going down today. That much is clear. Well, not to worry. I've got my panties back. If we can't find a killer, I'll pull one out of there. <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Waki Kitaki. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution is warmed up and it's a sold-out house. Very well. To recap, while yesterday's witness seemed more guilty than any other party... Guilty of panty snatching? We did find out one thing for certain. There were three people in the park at the time of the, of the murder. The witness, the victim, and the defendant. Correct, here, yeah, Judge. And today, I'd like to do something a little new age. I'd like to look at this horrible crime from the outside. Outside. The acquisition of the murder weapon. The preparation for the acts. A poor defendant told all, you see. To his betrothed. His betrothed? His fiancée, Herr Judge. His partner for life. With no chance for parole. Very well. You may show the, um, lucky lady to the stand. Your name and occupation, Fraulein. Alita Diala, my occupation is future wife. Ah, traditional values. I respect that. Too many brides these days can't even weave baskets blindfolded underwater. Yet you're here today as a witness for the prosecution. To be honest, I didn't want to testify at first, but I couldn't hide the truth. Hmm, honesty, another admirable trait. Fraulein, is it true that... On the day of the crime, the defendant, Moki Kitake, confessed his plans. His plans for murder. Yes. The witness will please give her testimony to the court. It was the day that the family health checkup results came back. When Moki found out that Dr. Maractus had lied, he flew into a rage. 
I'll teach him, he said. He took one of the family's pistols. And you already know what happened that night. I just don't see how anyone but Wookie could have done it. So, the pistol did belong to the Kitaki family then. Yes, with regard to regards to this, uh, an investigation is underway at the Kitaki mansion. On charges of the possession of illegal firearms. And the bullet that took the victim's life, was it? Fired from the pistol the defendant procured? Yes, this has been proven. How can you prove something like that? Bullets carry marks on the barrel that fire them, called rifling marks. Aren't they called... Ballistic markings? <laughs> rifling marks? Think of them as being a gun's fingerprints, left on every bullet it fires. And when did you first hear about Wookie's plan? It was the day of the murder. I should have stopped him. I just didn't think he would actually do it. Very well. The defense may begin the cross-examination. We'll begin the cheating, that's for sure. There we go. Can you say that for certain? How? Objection. Here, forehead. You will refrain from badgering the Fraulein. It was the defendant, um, Wookie, was it? Who took the pistol from his home. We know this for a fact now. I suppose we do. So how could anyone have used this pistol to shoot the victim? They could not. Simple logic, yeah? That does seem to be the case. Does the defense have anything to say regarding this point? Could someone else have used that pistol? There was another. Based on your testimony, there was clearly another. One other person had access to that pistol. What's this? Hmm, interesting. Let's ask the defense then. Tell the court who this other person with access was. Well, of course. I mean, you, Miss Tiala. M me? But why? You were quite clear when you told the court. You heard about the pistol from the defendant on the day of the murder. In other words, you knew what he was planning. Let me get this straight. You intend to tell us that this lady stole the pistol from her fiancé. And killed a man in cold blood on his behalf. I've heard of people doing strange things for love, but this... It does seem a bit... Unfathomable, to be sure. I'm all for romance and all for, and for supporting your partner in life, to be sure. But I think I would hesitate at murder. I hope you do more than hesitate. And what if a different connection could be proven? A connection between the witness and the victim. You might find that she had a personal motive beyond wanting to help her fiancé. Hmm, that would put things in a slightly different light. What possible connection are you suggesting here? You know what I am starting to think? I am starting to think that the police never looked inside that safe. I have evidence showing a connection between the witness, Mistiala, and the victim. That looks like... a medical charge? Not inside a safe at the Miractus Clinic. I'd like to draw the court's attention to the names written on the chart. What? Miss Tiala? W whatever. W why is your name on this chart? Well, care to explain the meaning of this, Miss Tiala? I'm not sure what you mean by meaning, Mr. Justice. Her warm little fiancé just froze over. I was on staff at the clinic until half a year ago. It was boring, so I quit. That's all. Is there a problem with that? Miss Tiala, you testify that you had no connection to the victim. And I don't. Now. Now? I quit half a year ago, didn't I? So there's no connection. Let me guess, you're the kind of guy who can't rest until he knows every last detail of his girlfriend's past. Am I right? Th that's not true at all. Why, I... I embrace the ones I love, past flaws and all. There's no connection now. Doesn't fly in a court of law. 
doesn't fly. She's one tough nut. She's probably she probably feels right at home with the Kitakis. You left your job at the Maractus Clinic, true. But you remain connected somehow. Very well, Mr. Justice. Show us evidence that proves the witness is still connected to the Maractus Clinic. She's discount Dahlia. You're not wrong. <laughs> These sandals are found in the Maractus Clinic lobby. They're yours, aren't they? <laughs> well, who knows? I'm sure there are lots of people with those sandals. So sorry, Fraulein, but your act isn't working. Your moment of hesitation just now cost you. What's with you? I thought you were on my side. Perhaps you are unaware that toes leave toe prints. A simple analysis of these sandals will reveal all. Well, now we see your true colors. I was wrong to cooperate with you from the beginning. I just wanted... I just wanted you to help get Wookie back on the straight and narrow. Hmm. This court thinks you need to worry less about Wookie and more about yourself. It sounds as though we need to hear a bit more about your story. Your sandals were found in the entrance to the clinic. Which means you went there on the day of the murder. Well, there's little point in denying it. Very well. The witness will tell us about this visit. Why did you go to the Maractus Clinic that day? I did go to the, cl the I did go to the clinic that day. My first time in half a year since I quit in January. I went to warn him. After all, I knew Wookie had the pistol. The doctor always was a timid man, too timid to admit his own mistake. Why else would I have gone? I'm not hiding any dark secrets. I wanted to tell him to be careful, as an old friend. By mistake, you mean... The mistake we heard about from the defendant. The botched operation. He was a timid, small man, but I never wished him harm. I just thought I should let him know, you know? Hmm, that does make sense. Yes, but there's still one thing which does not... What's that, Prosecutor Gavin? The sandals left in the lobby, of course. We can assume she wore these sandals to the clinic, yeah? Then why did she not wear them home? If it were me, I would have worn them home. Imagine Clavier in those shoes. <laughs> that, 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 that would be a sight. I would have worn those sandals home too, and the judge. So why were the sandals left behind? No, uh, you pointed out the contradiction before me. There's probably a good explanation for this, right, Miss Tiala? Though, to be fair, uh, high heel shoes are awful to walk in. <laughs> or they can be awful to walk in anyways. I don't have the feet for that. Though I, I, I wish I did, but no. <laughs> Say, for instance, there happened to be a similar pair of sandals there, which... You were home by mistake. Actually, that's right. I'm impressed, Mr. Gavin. Oh, it's nothing. There is, after all, no other possible explanation. Yeah, forehead? Oh, what the? No fair! He's filling the holes in her testimony. The defense may begin the cross-examination. This chart was found inside the safe in the doctor's office. Yes? Why would this one chart be in that safe? Miss Tiala, you know why it was, don't you? Mind failing, man. Dr. Maractus didn't have the leisure of making mistakes. That's why he wrote up a false report and kept the truth locked away. Bad here, doctor. And this is where you come in, Miss Tiala. The nurse who filed this chart was you, which means you knew about Wookie's failed operation. Interesting. You were in the same position as, as Dr. Maractus. 
Kind of makes it hard to claim no connection, doesn't it? You're bold for a novice. I'll give you that. Mr. Justice, you must know I was only a nurse. The doctor is responsible for the chart's con contents. Hmm. This chart business seems to be quite important. Please amend your testimony accordingly. Too bad, little attorney. My bracelet's reacting again. What is it, Apollo? I felt my bracelet vibrate just now. Your bracelet? Just like yesterday, like you said. When a witness isn't sure of something, their nervous habit gives them away. But I can't see anything, Apollo. Eh? Then what's my bracelet reacting to? Wait, maybe. Yes, that has to be it. What has to be it? Your senses, Apollo. They must be sharper than mine. Huh? I can't see it, but you can sense it. I don't know about that, Trucy. I don't have some kind of special power or anything. Listen to me, Apollo. There's a weak point somewhere in Miss Tiala's testimony. But we don't know what her nervous habit is. Well, then, what do we do? You have to perceive it yourself, Apollo. With your eyes and your senses. And it's up to me and my bracelet. I don't know why, but the bracelet helps. Somehow, touching it helps me focus. Let's give it a shot and bring down that testimony. Why would I go to the clinic now for a half-year-old chart? Why go to the clinic for a half-year-old shark now, you ask? Oh, sorry, that was him. You know why you would go now, don't you? I don't know what you're talking about. It was quite clear, Miss Tiala. You have a nervous habit. The moment you said the word now, you used your right thumb to fiddle with your ring. What? She was unsure. I saw it. Now, it's the key word. The chart wasn't part of your past. It was a clear and present threat. That's ridiculous. Why, if that weren't the case, I would have had six months to do something about it. Indeed. Eh? Which means something happened quite recently. Something to make that chart a problem for you now. Got her on the ropes now. I can feel it. Time to strike the killing blow with evidence. Miss Tiala, there's no use trying to hide it. The chart became a threat to you now because of this. A health checkup report belonging to the defendant. The Kitakis are trying to get out of the business. And the health checkup this month was their first ever. What did you think when you heard about this? Eh? Uh, oh, nothing. Why should I think anything? Oh, I would think you were positively beside yourself, because you were afraid. You knew that Waki's chest X-ray would what e rock, what Waki's chest X-ray would reveal. <laughs> A full half year had passed since the operation. You thought you were home free. When the chart came back to haunt you. Get wrecked. That's all, Your Honor. What? What just happened? Did did the witnesses admit to lying? I sensed it. There was a great aura emanating from her forehead. Very cool. So the lady was lying, it seems. That's correct. She said she had no connection to the Merectus Clinic, but her connection was deep indeed, a bit too deep. If the Kitakis got a hold of this chart with her name, she'd be finished. Isn't that right, Miss Tiala? You guessed it. Order! Order! I did it. 
I broke her testimony. Amazing, Apollo. I didn't see it at all. Patty was right about you. Wait. Miss Tiara. It's true that chart was bad news for me. That's why I went to meet the doctor that day. But that's all. I told him about Loki and went home. It appears this cross-examination is far from over. What? She hid the truth from us, this is clear. Yet, it is not clear that this truth has anything to do with the case at hand. Hmm. Very well. The witness will add this to her testimony. And we'll have a bit more cross-examination. Mm -hmm. It was so close. You're still close. Keep on her, Apollo. Nothing happened at all. I warned him and left. Objection! You warned him? With a bullet? You say nothing happened in the doctor's office. I disagree. Take a look at this. What's that? It looks like a squished up ball of clay. Kind of like you, actually. This bullet was found in the Maractus Clinic office. Something did happen in that office, Miss Tiala. Enough of this joking around. The police investigated that clinic. Ah, but this was stuck inside the doctor's safe. Inside the safe. I guess the police didn't check that far. But there is a problem. How can you say that bullet was fired on that day? Weren't you the one who explained rifling marks to us? The pistol was taken from the Kitaki mansion that day. If the marks on this bullet match the murder weapon, then that proves the firearm was discharged in that office on the day of the murder. Not bad here, forehead. Bailiff, have this bullet analyzed immediately. Thirty minutes later, a report arrives. The rifling marks on both bullets are identical. Well, it seems as though the bullet in the safe was fired from the murder weapon. Perhaps the defense would like to state their position. The bullet in the safe proves one fact. A pistol was fired in that office that day. And at the time of the firing, the safe was open. The safe which contained the top secret chart. Do you think someone was threatening Dr. Maractus in order to open the safe? Only one person was in a position to do such a thing. Our witness, Alida Tiala. Yeah, forehead. <laughs> order, order, order. Mr. Justice, where are you going with this? Are you accusing the witness? Lita Tiala knew about Woki Kitaki's botched operation. She got engaged to him without telling him about it. As long as that bullet remained in his chest, his days were numbered. What if she married him, and then the bullet finally reached its destination? What? That reminds me. Apparently, the Kitakis have been asserting themselves in lawful business practices. They're making quite a great deal of money. A fortune, if you will. Nefarious. So she planned to marry him just to get her hands on this fortune. You keep talking trash about my Alita. And I'll sue you, lawyer man. Huh? Me? Yeah, you said. You said you... You'd, you'd abuse my Alita. Uh, I think you mean accuse. Same difference. Well, you can't have her. She's mine. It was me. I shot that doctor. Me! He left me to die, so I left him to die too. There, in that park. W Wookie. Just hold down for a second. You keep your hands off my Alita or I'll... <laughs> Miss Tiala? I'm sorry, I just... It's been so long since I've laughed so hard. Something funny. Wookie, wake up and smell reality. Uh, Alita, baby? The signature on the chart. The engagement. I mean, come on, it's so obvious, even for a brainless, spoiled brat such as yourself. 
Alida. Your honesty is like a breath of foul air, Fraulein. Hey, I wasn't getting out of this clean, anyway. So the family fortune is what you're really after. That's right, I wanted the money. No way, that's whack. I ain't trying to hear that. Should have done the wedding earlier. Oh well. By the way, can I ask you a question? Who, me? I believe you said you were going to abuse me. Accuse. Of what crime, might I ask? Huh? Oh, I'm a bad girl, sure. I got close to that brat because I wanted the money, but he was the one with the pistol. He could have fired it into the safe after I'd already left the clinic. What? I would never do a thing like that. I was definitely- it was definitely that silly brat. Wait, but... What are you talking about? Trucy? You had the most to lose if that chart was found. But I didn't have a pistol, now did I? Well, you could have taken Wookiees. You think you'd have mentioned that, no? All I've heard him say is it was me, I shot him. That's only because he's trying to protect you. Sorry to intrude in this lovely conversation. But the two of you are forgetting one critical point. What? What point? Certainly, the Fraulein wanted that chart. You assume she threatened the doctor into opening that safe, but then... Wouldn't she have taken the chart? Oh. You see? That chart wouldn't have been left in that safe. Ah. He... He's right. Miss Tiala. Yes? It is clear to this court that you are not a very good fiancé. Oh, I'm flattered. Perhaps it's time you told us the truth. Tell us about yourself, including your actions and whereabouts on that day. Don't forget. We have proven that you were at the Miraculous Clinic on the day of the crime. Oi. Yes, I went to the clinic that day to speak to the doctor. I wanted that chart, but I failed to get it, so I went back to the clinic later. In any case, I didn't shoot him. You, you don't even have proof I stole that pistol, do you? And that brat was spotted in the park at the moment of the crime. Frankly, I don't think it matters if Dr. Maractus was shot in the temple or not. You went back later. That chart was dangerous, you understand? I needed to get rid of it. That's why I went that day. You couldn't get the chart then, could you? And later that night, Dr. Maractus was shot. I heard about the shooting later the day, but then I had to go back. No easy feat with the cops all over the place. Ah, th th that was you? Apollo, that sound it came from behind this door. Someone's in there. Breaking. They left through that window. So you were the burglar. That was you two? If only I had one more minute. Then I could have opened that safe and gotten the charge. What? That's trespassing. I'm brazen at that. Oh, is this a trial for trespassing now? Besides, you can't blame a girl for wanting to protect herself. They are gangsters, you know? In any case, Mr. Justice, we are cross-examination. Admitting the little crime to avoid the big one, huh? Oh my god, all the way to... Frankly, there we go. <laughs> the doctor was shot in the right temple, yes? So it seems. Let's review the facts again, shall we? If the killer shot from his this location, the bullet would have struck our victim square in the forehead. However, the entry wound was in the right temple. Yes, we heard testimony on this yesterday. At the time of the shooting, the witness was standing here. Just before the gun was fired, he shouted, 
The victim turned his head to look and was shot. But that testimony was proven to be a lie. Our egregious panty snatcher, Mr. Stickler, did witness the crime. But he was standing to the north, next to the trash can where he tossed those panties. If Mr. Stickler shouted from this location, the bullet couldn't hit his right temple. Silly, silly attorney. What? Do you remember what you had for breakfast that morning? Do you remember, Drizzy? I always have a glass of milk for breakfast. What matters is one thing. The doctor was shot in his right temple. If that's the case, there can only be one explanation. The panties guy was mistaken. But his location was proven. You can't write that off as him being mistaken. Objection. Then why don't you show us here, forehead? Show you? What? Must I explain everything? Very well, let's recap. If the witness, Panties Guy, was standing to the north, then where was the shooter standing? From what location did the killer shoot the victim? But wait, if the witness was standing there, how could anyone shoot the victim in the right temple? <laughs> I merely laid out the facts for us. It is up to the one possessing the shiny forehead to show us. If you can, that is. Oh, well, if you can, that is. Moki Kitaki was standing at the killer mark. Wesley Stickler at the witness mark. And of course, Palmeractus was at the victim mark. Let's hear what the defense has to say. Where was the killer standing when they shot the victim? Someplace else. Du -du 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 -du. As the facts stand now, we can't explain this crime without contradicting ourselves at some point. But I know why. The real killer shot from an entirely different location. What are you talking about? I don't see any other place. And apparently Mr. Justice does. Let's hear it. Where in the park did the killer shoot the victim from? <laughs> it's time to raise the roof and the stakes. Eh? Penalties are such frightening things, don't you think? But what if they were a bit more... Terrifying. Like so. D double pen pen penalty? Herr Forehead wishes to take us in a new direction? Then he must be ready for the challenges ahead. Challenge accepted. It's just this time. Are you sure, Apollo? The key is the witness, Mr. Stickler's testimony. If we believe that, and we know where he stood, and the victim turned when he shouted, there's only one place the killer could have been. The killer shot the victim from here. I believe we all owe a depth of gratitude to Miss Alida Tiala. What do you mean? Thanks to you, we had the chance to review the crime. And this time, we were prepared. We know that Wesley Stickler was telling the truth. We should have listened to him from the beginning. Wesley Stickler was standing next to the trash can. Trash can when he saw the two men. He shouted, just as he told us in his testimony. And the victim turned to look in his direction. A shot was fired. The victim was hit in the right temple. Oh no. Oh yes! Which direction was his right temple facing at that moment? That's right. Towards the noodle stand. Order! 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 S so, you're saying the killer was inside the noodle stand? Let's think about this a bit more, shall we? You say the killer was inside the noodle stand. Which would mean the victim, Dr. Maractus, came to the park, wheeling his own murderer in the cart behind him. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I think you'd notice if you were pulling someone along. There's something we should worry about before that. 
Why was he pulling the noodles then in the first place? Let's deal with our problems one at a time, shall we? Someone was hiding in the stand. We have not come this far to talk about possibilities. Let's talk about proof, baby. Show us evidence that proves someone was in that stand. Can I prove that? You want evidence that someone was in that stand? Well, I got it. I got it right here. Intriguing. Let's see what you've got. Show us proof that someone was hiding in the noodle stand. Slippers, slippers, slippers. The Miraculous Clinic, and they're covered with paint. These slippers were found in the, in the trash can near the crime scene. And a single slipper print was found at the scene. Right next to the noodle stand. Uh -huh. Oh, Miss Diala, your toe print was found in the, re in the left slipper. In other words, this is proof you were inside that noodle stand. <laughs> Yet there was only one slipper mark found at the scene. Can this be called a footprint in good faith? Observe the diagram. A park pathway runs right next to the slipper mark. A slipper wouldn't leave a trace on the cobblestone path. Yet you still cannot say this is a footprint, yeah? Why not? You have an impression left by a single slipper. What if it was on the stand and simply fell to the ground? That's... That's just dumb. One more thing. A noodle stand is typ typically cluttered with the tools of the noodle making trade. There's no room for a person to ride in there. Hmm. You have a point. Could someone have hidden in that stand? Apollo, I think I might be onto something. I think I figured out one of our pieces of evidence. In order to make room for the stand, some things would have to be... removed. Well, Mr. Justice, do you have proof that someone could have hidden in the stand? I can prove one thing. Someone did scheme to clear the space in that stand. Okay. This is a noodle bowl from the stolen Eldune's noodles noodle stand. Yes, and what about it? Almost done. We discovered a large quantity of these bowls yesterday. In the lobby of the Miraculous Clinic. A large quantity of noodle bowls in the victim's clinic. Mr. Eldune was very clear about those bowls. Don't care who did it. Without that stand, I'm finished. My noodle bowls were in there too. Yet the bowls were removed. That night, there was space inside that noodle stand. Space created at the Miraculous Clinic. No less. Right around the time that you were there, Miss Alita Tiala. Stop! I won't listen to any more of these wild fantasies. No, not fantasies. The worst lies in that spoiled brat's pickup lines. And I would like to remind the witness of her current status. This court does not consider you entirely innocent. Show me an innocent. I'll show you a fairy tale. In any case, the defense has somehow made its point. The witness had both a motive and an opportunity to kill Dr. Maractus. More fairy tales. This whole trial is a fairy tale. Then please, pull us back down to reality, Miss Tiala. I'm giving you one last chance to explain yourself. This is it. Why was Dr. Maractus pulling that stand at night? And what was Alita Tiala doing inside it? Time to get to the bottom of this case. That night, I went to ask Dr. Maractus for the chart. I had no intention of ever letting that chart fall into the Kitaki family's hands. But Dr. Maractus didn't understand. For some reason, he thought the Kitakis had sent me. So I gave up and went home. All I did was talk to him. You knew about the botched operation. So you try to get rid of the chart to save yourself. I won't make excuses. 
And I did warn the good doctor, and gave him a chance. I told him that Brad got his health checkup report. And that he was coming to settle the score. Hmm, I see. Very well, Mr. Justice. Begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. This is the last testimony. Actually, as to... Either I perceive the truth, or it's over. I got it. All I did was talk and lie. What? Show me proof. I'm pretty sure about this one. I think I'm getting the hang of this. A little slip in confidence, and they give it all away. The proof is you, Miss Tiala. All I did was talk to him, he claimed. Yet you can't hide your own nervous twitch when you say those words. My. Twitch? What are you talking about? You have a habit of scratching the area of your neck around the edge of, the, of your scarf. What? What? This is working better than I'd hoped. Her unconscious actions tell the truth she won't say. Habits and lies. Two dots. Connect the dots and find the truth. Don't look at me like that. I told you the truth. It seems that when you recall what really happened in that office, you can't keep your hands off your neck, can you? Hmm, it seems that nervous habits... <laughs> My Twitch, I'm not a streamer. <laughs> ...are unconscious reactions that manifest when someone is trying to hide something. You can't hide behind your scarf, Miss Tiala. Something happened between you and the victim in the Maractus clin Clinic office. And I've got proof that shows exactly what happened. Lamp. Where's Lamp? Lamp. What's that? You're touching her scarf again. There's something unusual about this lamp. The bulb is broken, and there's a red splotch on the cord. Eh? <laughs> Seeing how you hide your neck, I think I can come up with a plausible explanation for the lamp's state. Well, spit it out! This talking in circles nonsense is killing me! Very well. The answer is very simple, Miss Alita Tiala. Please remove your scarf. This is a trial to determine what happened in that park. Yet we seem to have drifted off target. We'll find out soon enough if we're drifting. As soon as the witness removes her scarf. I... I won't do it! This is insane! I'm a... an unrelated third party! You can't order me to remove my... Miss Tiala. I'm afraid you've forgotten that what's already been proven. What? You're hardly unrelated. Please remove your scarf. No, oh, no. I knew it. So I was right, wasn't I, Miss Alida Tiala? Your neck. That isn't what I think it is. Something did happen that night at the Miraculous Clinic. You needed to get that chart back, no matter what it took. Even if you had to steal your fiance's pistol to do it. But, but wait! Looking at this lamp and the witness's neck, it looks like the very opposite happened. Exactly. The victim in the clinic that night was this witness specifically. You tried to threaten Dr. Maractus and he attacked you. That's what happened that night at the Maractus clinic. Uh -huh. Order! 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 Will someone please tell me what really happened? I 
told you the truth already. I went to the clinic that night to warn Dr. Maractus. That gangster knows everything. He's coming for you. Looks like my clinic seen its last patient. We have to get rid of that chart. Quick, open up your safe. Give it to me. So you can save your own skin. What? I know what you're up to. You want in with the family. And if they see that chart, you're finished. Leaving me holding the short straw. If I'm going down, I want some company. You. And what happened next? He jumped at me and knocked me to the floor. Then he took that cord. Palmaractus was serious. Deadly serious. He really tried to strangle me. I, I must have blacked out. So, you were the victim. And the red splotch on the cord was your lipstick. I... I didn't want to remember that night. That's why I didn't bring it up. There, are you happy now? Uh... I was so out cold, almost killed. And you claim I then snuck into that noodle stand? But how could I? <laughs> Well, one thing is clear. We now know what really happened at the Maractus Clinic. And it would seem that our victim was not entirely without blame himself. I... I'm sorry. I get so nervous just thinking of it. It's hard to breathe. I I've told you everything. Can I go home now? Hmm. You bear some responsibility for events that day, true. Yet, if you were also a victim, this court would owe you some sympathy. Well, Mr. Justice... I believe this clears up the remaining questions for, for Miss Tiala. And did this happen? Suddenly, everyone's sympathizing with her. I don't know what to think anymore, Apollo. I mean, is that it? Do we know everything we need to know about Miss Tiala? Very well. This finishes the cross-examination of this. Clavier, okay. <laughs> Not so fast. This party is just getting started. Now we rock. What? Those spikes on your head are softer than they look. Or do you not have the stomach to go all the way? Prosecutor Gavin? Pamaractus choked Alita Tiala. She fell unconscious. But what happened next? He's right. There is more we don't know. She was choked hard enough to leave that mark. She would have been out for a while. Even still, what if it was her in that noodle stand? Alita Tiala, half dead. Dr. Maractus pulling that stand. And a bullet fired from inside the noodle stand. What if it's all true? He might have already figured out what truly happened that night. Miss Alita Tiala, as you can see, we're not through with you just yet. You really want to blame me for this murder, don't you? You too, Prosecutor, Gavin? Me, Fraulein? I only wish to know the truth. Well, let's go back over what we've learned up until now. On the day of the murder, Waki saw his checkup report. From which he learned about the bullets still inside him. So he took a pistol from the family stash. With the intent to give Dr. Maractus some of his own medicine. Miss Ciala heard about this from Waki. So she went to the Maractus clinic ahead of him. In order to get rid of the chart with her signature. But then, something happened. It sounds like you figured it all out. But remember, I was the victim. I was out cold. But what about Dr. Maractus? That does seem to be the problem. He had just strangled Alita Tiala, perhaps, he thought, to death. What did he do after his crime? I was just knocked out, not dead. From the state of his clinic and the scene in the park. I think it's clear that the good doctor did what the good doctor did next. Well here forehead, care to guess? 
Well, Mr. Justice, what did Miss, what, what did Dr. Maractus do? Maybe he did think he killed Alita Tiala. Do I have evidence to show what he did next? As his next move, Dr. Maractus stole Gael Dune's noodle stand. What? Killing me disturbed him that much? So much he randomly stole the noodle stand? It wasn't so random. Remember all the bowls in the clinic's foyer? Bowls that belonged inside that stand. I think it's pretty obvious, don't you? That stand was at the clinic. However, the question is, why did he remove the bowls? Maybe because the stand was heavy. Or he wanted to put something in the stand in their place. Ah, wait, you don't mean. I do. Dr. Maractus did replace those bowls with something. Your corpse, Miss Tiala. M my corpse? Dr. Maractus panicked. He thought it killed you. His next move would be to dispose of the body. That's crazy talk. You're all crazy. And let's think about it logically. The doctor had a place to dispose of you in mind. But on his way there, who should he run into but the defendant, Waki Kitaki? I question your logic. What's this, Prosecutor Gavin? The park is a dead end. Why would he head in that direction to begin with? That's right! He had no reason to go there! Oh, now I get it! It was a trick! That spoiled brat made him do it! He made the doctor steal the stand! Tell me, why would someone go to a dead end? Unless the park was his destination. What? Apparently, the defense has an idea. Tell us where Dr. Maractus was heading with the stand. Here, please show us on this diagram. To where exactly was the victim dragging that stand? River, river, river. There, that's a... A river. Yes, Your Honor. I scarcely need to explain why. A perfect place to dispose of a body. It, it, he was going to throw me into that river? He didn't have many other options, Fräulein. I believe this clears up all of the remaining questions. The victim pulling the stand and the defendant before him. And inside the stand, you, Miss Alida Tiala. <laughs> And then, the denouements. Wesley Stickler, of Panty Snatching fame, walks up. Seeing the two men, he shouts. In that instant. So, I shot him? You were the only one who could have stolen Waki's pistol. It had to be you! Well, Miss Tiala. Huh. Nice work. You mean I'm right? I mean you've done a fine job dreaming up a story. To get that spoiled brat off the hook. You're the one who's dreaming. Apollo's backed up everything he said with facts. If you're so sure he's making it up, give us another reason. Why was Dr. Maractus pulling that stand through the park? Who knows? But there's one gaping hole in your logic. I think Mr. Gavin knows where if I speak. Where of what? I can't believe she's still trying to deny this. Makes this true, Prosecutor Gavin. Must I always be the one to point out here forehead's errors? Uh, maybe there's... there really is something. I believe the Fraulein speaks of Herr Doctor's car. His car? That's right. The Maractus Clinic has that big garage. In which sat a green sports car, was it? Why would he steal this stand in the first place? If he wanted to carry a body, he would have used the car. Ugh. And so he finds our victim without probable cause to steal that stand. No defense without a case. Um, I have an idea. You know that green car? I bet it wouldn't run. It was broken. 
Ah, what an excellent counter argument, Fraulein. Too bad you're quite wrong. Eh? Don't tell me you've forgotten what happened to your daddy. Daddy? That's right. That night. The car that hit Mr. Wright. Was that green sports car? Oh, yes. I I'd nearly forgotten about it. Afterward, he drove it back to that garage. It ran fine. That's right. So, why didn't he use his beloved sports car? Hmm? Uh. A glaring contradiction, to be sure. More glaring than your foreheads. No. No! Order! 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 Well, Mr. Justice, why didn't Dr. Maractus use his car to carry the body? Uh, um, is that a groan of surrender I hear? Some advice. Now's a good time to review all you know. Everything you've learned over the last two days. Everything I've learned. Mr. Justice, this contradiction casts doubt on your entire case. This is truly your last chance. The defense will explain to us what happened last night. That night. Uh, the car didn't run. I have an idea. It's all coming together. It was clogged with panties, but like... Like I said earlier, that was, that was debunked by Mythbusters, wasn't it? <laughs> that night, Dr. Maractus couldn't use his car. Ha! Now you're making even less sense than usual. Not according to my information, Miss Tiala. Put one and one together, and the explanation is simple. If it's so simple, perhaps you can show us some evidence. Show us proof why the car wouldn't run that night. Let's see now. Panties? Again? All sorts of things come out of my panties. Even the truth. Another crime was committed the night of the murder. The theft of these panties. The latest in the string of similar thefts, actually. And that night, the snatcher was caught in the act. Panty justice. A brave young girl chased the thief until he hid. In the Maractus Clinic garage. What? The snatcher hid the panties there before running. Perhaps someone in this court remembers where he hid them. Why? Weren't they found in the, in the car's exhaust pipe? Exactly. By the way, I learned something yesterday. A very important piece of information. Well, yeah, but also no, because, like, the severity of, like... I don't know, I like I like how like they vary. There are like certain things that are like more like I guess like game changing in a way. Those should obviously be bigger. But I feel like they're still very lax, especially when you have a a guide, but <laughs> a very important piece of information. And I learned it from you, Prosecutor Gavin! Um, so you were here investigating. And then like, maybe, and then maybe like some bigger like in the middle somewhere. That would actually be kind of good. I wouldn't mind that. And I was on my way home when my hog gave up the ghosts. Hog? My motorcycle once starts. A clogged exhaust pipe. Too bad. It looks like such a nice bike too. Hard to believe that it could break just from that. Cars, motorbikes, they're all the same. Clog the exhaust and they won't run. My, how interesting. While Miss Yala and the doctor were struggling, 
the panty snatcher snuck into the Maractus garage. From that time until the time we found these. That car wouldn't start. Wh what? That's why Dr. Maractus had to use the noodle stand. It was the next closest thing he could think of. Well, Miss Tiala? This wraps your doubts up quite nicely, I think. So it does. Where... Where am I? So dark, can't see. Cramped. The pain, my throat's burning. What's your problem? You, Doc, I know what you did. Huh? Lucky? You lied to me. So you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you a taste of your own medicine, man. Wait, let me explain. Fine. I'll give you your last request. Listen, you're being tricked. But not how you think. It's not just me. No. He'll ruin everything. We have to stop him. Seize this one, you two. Funny, this isn't the way I was supposed to turn out. Oh well, too bad. There's still one mystery. How did you manage to disappear from that stand? In the silence after the shot, I heard the witness running. <laughs> I believe we heard this much from Wesley Stickler. He went to use a public phone to inform the police. Which is when I made my escape. Which is when you left that slipper print. Dr. Maractus didn't bother taking my slippers off. I threw them out after I stepped in that paint, though. That was your mistake. No. My biggest mistake was coming to you for help, Mr. Justice. Eh? I believed in you. You and your anything agency. If anything would get Wookie declared guilty, it was you. And I believe we've reached a conclusion of sorts. Prosecutor Gavin, how is Miss Alita Tiala doing? She's confessed to everything. We're processing her arrest now. <laughs> Prosecutor Gavin sure seems calm for someone who just lost. I think he already knew. He'd figured out he, she was a killer a while ago. Some advice. Now's a good time to review all you know. Everything you've learned over the last two days. You lost. But I didn't exactly win either. Hmm? Something's the matter, her forehead? Looks like it's time to announce a verdict. Nice. Court is adjourned. Sweet. Great job, Apollo. You did it. Yeah, we did. Somehow. Walk us off, uh, walk us off the hook. Free to become the gangster he's always wanted to be. And he has you to think. Hey, attorney man. You're gonna pay for what you did to me, Alita, Holmes. Hard to blame, I guess. You get my Alita back! Stupid pointy head attorney with death wish! Enough, Wookie. Ah, Mr. Kitaki. It's high time you opened your eyes, Wookie. What do you know, old man? I think it's about time you open yours. Giving up the life, trying to become some kind of businessman. Don't talk about what you don't understand, Wookie. I'm afraid the guard is going to throw them both out. Not in jail. Wouldn't that be a happy ending? Hey, maybe we can help them out. We know why Mr. Kitaki needs to make so much money. Maybe we should tell him Wookie. 
Oh, Wookie? Apollo has something to tell you. Huh? I do? Why you put me on the spot? Nah, what's that? Show him the reason why, Apollo. Why is Mr. Kitaki trying to become a businessman? Think about it, Wookie. Think about your condition. I talked with your mother, Little Plum, yesterday. Face, we need a lot of money right now. Clean money, that is. She doesn't mean. Or really, are you? I searched the globe, and I found one. A doctor who can take that bullet out of you, Wookie. But it's an expensive procedure. Man, but you got plenty of money already, don't you? I won't use it. It was the gangster life that did this to you, Wookie. I want to help you, and I want to do it clean. Please understand, Wookie. D Dad! Man. I see how it is, old man. Always you looking out for. Out for. Wookie? Listen good, old man. One day. One day. I'm gonna take you out, and then we'll see who's the OG. You try to hide in your business suit. I'll find you. Stupid old geezer. My. Wookie. I know, I love it so much. And then he has, like, the smallest eyes. <laughs> No, it's a should be. Mr. Kitaki, I liked him more without the puppy dog eyes. Eyes? I'm glad to have met you. I'm not so glad. So good with words. But I know a professional job when I see one. Thank you. Who? Me? I don't think... Someday, I'll bake you one of our latest. The Kitaki lime pie. He's opening a pie shop? So long. And he was gone. Well, let's head back, Apollo. To the right anything agency. Hey, since when do I work at your agency? Aw, we make a good team. Don't just stand there. Let's get going. Huh? Why not? She did help me out. And there's a few questions that still need answers. Like this power of mine that she showed me. My bracelet. If anyone can help me figure it out, it's her. I can't say I care much for what her father has become. Oh, that's right! We have to go someplace first. Huh? Where? Why, to claim a reward from Mr. Dune. Ah, salty noodles. Right. You got a stand back already? Oh, and after that, you can come see my show. With a special appearance of the amazing by the amazing Mr. Hack. Oh, it's special, all right. Please, anything but him. Yay! <laughs> Turn about serenade is next up, and I've been practicing. <laughs> huh, anyways, I think I'm just gonna end it there. And uh, maybe, um,. Like, or at least start Serenade tomorrow. I'm not exactly sure how long it is anymore. The video? What do you mean? Do, 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 do. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Sorry, I'm just, I'm, I can be kind of slow. And I also forget what I'm talking about as I'm talking about it sometimes. It's, it, it's, 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 <laughs> it's a curse, really. Um, I'm not, it's not really that much longer than this one. 
Like by parts anyways, but like I, I guess the parts are a bit longer because there's a lot going on. Oh, by the way, you hear the music that's going in the background? I don't know if it's like not loud enough or what it is. It turned up a bit, I guess. <laughs> I got my own brother to make a remix of the Blue Badger song. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it's kind of faint. There we go. I should be able to hear it a bit better. <laughs> you can find it on... on uh... Okay, that's that's fair, I guess. You can you can find it on YouTube with that title. I would link it, but I don't have it on on hand right now, and I'm too lazy to look it up. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you for for joining me for this. I really appreciate it, and I hope you had a great time too. Watching me butcher being not even German, but like American German something like that, faking an Amer a German American accent. I don't fucking know. Sometimes he just sounds kind of British, other times he actually sounds German, <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, hope to see you again next time. And hopefully uh, I can probably start turn about Serenade tomorrow. So I'm excited for that. I've been looking forward to turn about Serenade since like... Since when? Oh god, it's been so long. Justice for all? <laughs> like somewhere between Justice for All and Trials and Tribulations. I've been looking forward to learn about Serenade. Anyways, yeah, I, I keep rambling. So with that, I hope to see you next time. And I hope you have a lovely day or night or whatever it is right now for you and uh, hope to see you next time